Good morning, SMP Nation. I just have to say really quickly, I did not realize that my intro video that I used to do for Takeover Tuesday said Takeover Tuesday. I was about to play it and I'm like, wait, it's not Tuesday, it's Wednesday. So no little intro. We're getting right into it. But good morning, everyone. I'm going to check. I always got to do this. Make sure you guys can hear me. Let me know if I sound okay. I want to make sure I sound loud and clear. 
because it's been so long since I've seen you all. Um, I was looking at all the comments this morning before we went live and I'm like, oh, my friends are here. So exciting. And happy Valentine's Day, you guys. It is such a nice day, at least here in San Diego. We have been dealing with a lot of just sad weather. It's been gloomy and gray and rainy and it's finally a little sunny today. So perfect. <laughs> Someone commented takeover Wednesday, mad crafts. Yes, exactly. Takeover Wednesday. We got to find a different word with W, but well, it's Valentine's Day. So it's a Valentine's Day special from me to you. And I'm so excited. And yeah, it's just been a while. Um, two things before we get started, just to just as a disclaimer, number one, I was under the weather about a week ago. I still kind of have a little bit of a voice thing. So I'm going to try and do my best here, but I'm sorry if I sound a little raspy. And number two, I've had a lot of caffeine this morning. So I'm energetic, I'm pumped, and I'm ready to do a fun project with you all today. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, I want to know how you guys are. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing, what you guys are working on. A lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's, let's see, well, it's National Embroidery Month. So I hope you are working on some embroidery, doing some fun stuff. We are doing embroidery today because National Embroidery Month and Valentine's Day, I really wanted to do something that we could do a start to finish gift that you can gift to someone you can keep for yourself, of course. Um, it's just a great little little item to, for anyone to have, and there's many ways you can use it, and I will show you in just a second. Um, Paula's working on a quilt. How exciting. Um, I'd love to see it. If you're on our, I think you are on our Facebook group. you got to post pictures of your progress. I'd love to see it. Um, ooh, we're doing embroidery today. I was going to say, I hope everybody's working on a project while we're live, so that way we can all be you know, creating something, working on something together. So that's my favorite. When I see you guys are working on stuff or finishing a project while I do a show, that's the best because then I see you're, you're inspired and you're getting creative. Love it. So yay, Paula said she'll share it soon. I cannot wait to see it. Baby quilt with embroidery designs. I'm seeing a lot of quilts and I just want to mention that Quilt Fest is basically a month away. We're a little over, a little less than a month away and it is just time is number one time is flying by so fast I just can't even believe it but our submissions for our quilt fest contest is up so you guys can go submit a quilt if you're working on a quilt right now you'll have up until I believe March 3rd I want to say March 3rd you'll have to submit it but I will get you finalized information I'll post that all on our social media so you know when the um, date is for deadlines for that quilt contest. But you can go and submit a quilt. I have the link down below in the description box along with all the products I'm using today, where you can get the design, all of that kind of stuff. So just check it out. If you want to submit a quilt for a quilt contest, we are giving away lots of fun stuff during Quilt Fest. And with that contest, we do have some really great prize packages for our winners and special. We did this last year for Quilt Fest. And I think we just need to do it forever because it's the best. But we are having some celebrity judges joining us. So we'll have Beth Ann Nemish. We'll have Adina Sitar. We will have um, Jane Hopperich. And we will have Kimberly Einmo as our celebrity judges. And Kimberly Einmo is actually going to be, I think she was our judge last year, but um, she had some things going on. So she wasn't able to be on the show, I don't think. I don't think she was able to join us. But this year she will be. So I'm super excited. We're gonna have some really nice um, segments where we can get to know them and ask them what exactly they look for in an award-winning quilt. So just really great, get excited, mark your calendars for March 11th through the 15th because it is going to be so much fun. But that's the big thing. We are getting prepped and ready for Quilt Fest and it's gonna, it's going to show up before we know it. And, you know, I just yesterday, I'm like, oh, it's, it's January 1st. It's the new year. And now it's Valentine's Day. I just, I can't even believe it. But I'm glad we're all here to say how, how fast time goes together. We're all here to just enjoy it. And especially with these shows, I love being able to just sit and hang out with you guys, stitch something out and just share. It's just the best. It's the best part of my job, I think. So 
today, getting into this, we are going to be making these adorable, let me switch my camera so I can show you this um, up close because I'm going to show you what all comes inside here really quickly. So here's my little setup. But today we are going to be making these quilted baskets from Ken Verbell. And we're going to do a little Valentine's twist on them because I thought these are so perfect for gifts. You know, if you're, you want to do something for someone special, maybe friends, coworkers, whatever the case may be. These are such cute little ways to make, you know, like a personalized gift, but then you can also throw things in there, put some candy, put, you know, just some fun stuff. So really excited for this. This is a very easy project. I would even say that this could be a beginner in the hoop project. This is all done in the hoop. So there are some more pictures and you also get a bunch of sizes. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this can be done in a four by four, which was really important to me because I know a lot of you, um, at least a, a handful of you that watch have a four by four hoop and you can't go bigger. So I really wanted to make sure that everybody could work on this project and it's just going to be a smaller basket, but that's okay. You're still getting the basket. So this is great. Right here, right here you're seeing the um, hexagon, which is what we're going to be making today. But when you get this design, you also get designs for a rectangle and a square basket and you get them in a bunch of different sizes. So if you have a larger machine like me, I'm going to be using the biggest frame today, mainly because when I do the shows, I like to do bigger hoops and bigger um, stitch outs. So that way you can really see it. But I can do any size here because I have the hoops and I have the hoop size for it because I'm on the um, baby lock all tear today. So I can I can do the different sizes. But again, this works for people who just have a four by four or if you have all the way up to a nine and a half by 14. I know there's bigger ones out there. Do you know me? have got a bigger hoop size if you've got that machine, but this will work for everyone. And it also has all the design files for you. So if you want to go check this out while we're working on this, or you want to come back and rewatch this, I have this down in the link below. You guys can go check it out. It's on smplive.tv and we can do it and you can get it and then come back and do this project with me. So very exciting. And I also have all of the product that I've used today, everything that I'm going to go through with you. And as we're working along with this project, I have it all linked down below. So if you have any questions, please drop them down below. I will try and answer them. I've got my comments right here so I can see what you guys are talking about. So let's go back to the project and get started. So as you can see, I just want to let you know, you're not going to need this much fabric. This is just me being indecisive and I could not... <laughs> I could not pick out a fabric to do for today's show. First off, let me just let me just say this really quick. I do not have a lot of Valentine's fabric. I was looking and I was even at the store last week and I'm like, oh, I really want to get some cute fabric. Um, I was looking through my bags and bags of bags and just mountains of fabric that I have and there was no Valentine's fabric. So I have a bunch of options. So I'm hoping you all can help me decide which fabric to use today. And I feel like it'll make it a little more fun because you guys are picking it. So let me come back here. And I did see a question about this design. So this is gonna be a CD and you're going to just put this, excuse me. You're just gonna pop this in your computer and then get yourself a USB stick. I've got mine right here. Let me pull it out of the machine. Um, oh my goodness, where is it? There we go. So I just loaded it onto a USB stick. I put just the whole CD on my USB stick. I just didn't really want to kind of sift through all the files, but that's the easiest way to do it. And that will get you your designs. So very exciting, but we also have these. I didn't link these down below, but we do have USBs if you ever need to stock up. So let's, let me put this back in the machine. Okay, so I've got kind of laid out everything that we're gonna need today. So I just saw a comment about the CD drive. I had to go look for a computer around my office, around here. I had to go steal someone's computer because my, my computer didn't have a CD drive either. So if that is a problem, um, I can see what I can do with that. Maybe they've got a USB uh, or a um, zip file somewhere I can get you guys if you guys purchase this. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. But for now, this is a CD. 
So I know CDs aren't really around anymore, but it works. All right. So there's the design. Oops, let's get that straight up. All right. So to get started, we'll pick out our fabric in just a second because that's going to be the fun part. But what you're going to need, I've got all my instructions here. Um, you're also going to get in this file, you'll get really, really detailed and clear instructions, which is why I love Kimberbell so much because they really just, they nail it with the instructions. They've got like right when you're going to change a bobbin, when you're going to change a thread, there's, it's just very clear to anyone who's, who's, even if you've never done embroidery before, I believe this is so easy and so simple. So I'm going to put this off to the side, but that will be there when you get that design. So what you're going to need, you're going to need your hoop and pick out what size you want to use. Um, I'm going to be doing the extra large design today, which is for if you've got the nine and a half by 14 hoop. So that's what I'm going to use today. You're also going to need some sort of water soluble stabilizer. So that's the key part because we're going to, there's a step in here. We're not doing buttonholes, but we're doing, um, an eyelet, I suppose. So we're going to do that later because we're going to tie it with some, you can use ribbon. I had, so here was the deal. <laughs> All the ribbon that I had was very thick. So I did cut some, but I'm having some trouble with it fraying. So I also brought over some, just some other examples that you can use in place of ribbon. So we've got like yarn here, um, got some different colors here. I also considered and thought it was a good idea that you could always use like some um, elastic and sew some fabric around it. And then you've got some stretchy um, ribbon or whatever the case may be. Maybe if you want to really extend it and make it really big or not keep it as tight. Um, but I'll show you that. We'll get to that in just a little bit. So main thing, you need your hoop. You need your water, sta water soluble stabilizer. You're going to need your fabric. Then you're going to need this amazing stuff. So this is Kimberbell's Flexi Foam. Oops, there's a little stain on there. Um, this is Kimberbell's Flexi Foam. So this is very similar to, you know, like the Bozel in our foam. It's basically a shaping foam. This was a scrap from another project that I had done, but I had some extra. I don't know there was a cut right here. So I hope it'll just fit in this little area, but we'll find out. I do have some other ones. I've got the Bozel one ready on standby if this isn't enough, but I think we'll be okay with this. So you'll need some of this. Um, I would say Kimberbell has all the cutout instructions for the measurements of all these fabrics. So depending on what size you're doing, I'm doing the extra large. So you're going to, or I'm doing the extra large. I don't know why I circled that one, but it'll give you all the, all the measurements of all the fabric that you need. So um, Patricia, I believe we should have this. I actually saw this at San Marcos at our San Marcos retail store last week. So we should still have it. Should still have it. Um, yeah, we have a whole Kimberbell kind of display that you can go check out with all of our Kimberbell stuff. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'll leave the instructions right there. But this flexi foam, I really like it. Kimberbell's is lightweight. It's super easy to work with. I've sewn on this before. I've quilted with this before. And now I'm embroidering. So it works out super, super easy to work with. It doesn't cause any problems with your machine. I know that's really important. Um, we don't want anything happening to our machine, of course. So along with the foam stabilizer, all that stuff, you're going to need some cutting tools because we're doing some, this is an in the hoop project. If you've never done an in the hoop project, um, we're going to cut some of the fabric. We're going to do some trimming and some um, other good stuff. So these are my favorite scissors to use. I love Kai. I've talked about these all the time. They are amazing. My personal favorite are these two. This is the Kai 5210. I think this is the perfect scissor for anyone. Like it, it lasts so long. They stay sharp forever. I think I've had these for probably six or seven months and they, they're like brand new every single time I use them. So they're great. And then these are the smaller ones. I like to use these because they're curved um, for applique and any other trimming, you know, when I'm doing in the hoop projects things like that. So these will come in handy. This one is from Quilter Select. If you like the um, little duck bill type of scissor, I guess that's what they're called, the duck bill scissors? Yes. <laughs> um, but 
These are also great as well. Um, just kind of giving you some different options. Love these as well. These I probably use more for only applique, um, just because of that angle. And you're really able to like get into all the nitty gritty spots before you do like satin stitches and things like that. So another great option. And then we're obviously going to cut some fabric today. So just grab a rotary cutter. This one's from Ulfa. I love 45 millimeter is usually my go-to. That's kind of like my go-to size. 60 can be a little too big. And then the, um, what is it? 28 or I think it's 38, something like that. The small, the step down in the rotary cutters, I have kind of, they're a little bit too small for me, but of course, always keep your seam ripper. Got to keep it in, got to keep it in the room. <laughs> All right, and then you're just gonna need something to stick. So I've got a couple different options here. Um, I have another option as well. Same same product, but just different different medium, I guess. So these are the tape options. You're gonna be, be taping some fabric down to your hoop. So this is from RNK. This is the Embroidery Perfection Tape. Love this one. I like that it's a bright color so I can see it against the other fabrics that I'm working with. It keeps the fabric down it keeps it stuck to your hoop so there's nothing going around we're also going to be taping some stuff to the back of our hoop don't freak out if, if not it won't be it won't be difficult I promise but we're going to be sticking stuff to the back of the hoop and we want to make sure that it doesn't fold and get underneath the hoop and get stuck so really important to have some sort of um, adhesive that we can stick this to the back of the hoop this is also Kimberbell's paper tape love this one as well I always keep them like this by my desk depends on which one I use kind of in the moment both of them are great love these love them and then this is kind of my tried and true I don't use this one as often anymore because this one has quickly replaced the spray for me <clears throat> mainly because I can really get up close to any corners that I need to glue down anything like that Bernadette commented, um, I use medical tape. Reen Wilcoxon, shout out to her. She also uses medical tape, and that's a great option as well. If that's what you've got, use that for sure. So this is, I'm not sure if this is new. This is newer to me, but 505, which is this temporary adhesive spray, came out with a glue stick. So you can just glue things right on to wherever you need to go. We do have these, so go check them out. Um, we've got all the things that I'm showing today are on our website and also in our retail store. So check those out. Um, Ronnie, I saw your comment about where to get the embroidery design. If you go to smplive.tv or let me switch the camera back to me really quick. But if you go to smplive.tv or you just, you're watching this video right now. If you go down to the description box, I have it linked right there for you. you can just click the link and it'll take you right to smp live tv where you can get that design so happy happy to answer that but all in all so that's mainly what you're going to need we've got some options for ribbon we'll or for um tying the little eyelets once we're done and well, i guess we'll kind of figure that out once we get there um just a couple different things um so let me clear some of this off and we will get started but yeah I didn't know that they had created this or they had done you know a different version in glue stick form and it's a game changer total total game changer and it dries clear as well so it's obviously dark blue it kind of reminds me of Elmer's glue the purple and then it goes to clear that's what this does and it's temporary so you can take it off it doesn't gum your needle you can wash it right out of whatever fabric you're working with or projects I really like it very impressed sometimes the only reason I kind of bought it in the first place was because this sometimes I don't want it to the spray can be a little bit it's not as concentrated I guess and it's not as controlled so if there's a certain area that you need to spray or you really need to get into like a certain corner that might not be the option it will probably be this one okay but let me move some of this out of the way and we will get started so I'd love to hear if you guys have any Valentine's plans or if you guys are doing anything special. I'd love to hear. Um, I, I don't have any plans, but I know that I will be eating chocolate. <laughs> I, that will be the first thing on the to-do for today. Um, I don't have any with me. It's a shame. All right. So let me move this out of the way. I cut a couple pieces of stabilizer just because 
I am the type of person that if I'm stitching and I'm doing some embroidery, I will float um, an extra piece of stabilizer underneath the um, hoop if I see any sort of puckering or anything like that. So um, I always cut some extra pieces just in case because you never know. It's better to be prepared than to be freaking out when your machine's getting messed up. <laughs> so I'm going to set this off to the side. Now the big question is, what fabric should I use today? Let me see. Ooh, you did, Tammy said she did Valentine's Day. Oh, Tammy's grandson, 15 months old. Oh, how cute. Oh, happy birthday. Wow, that's, I'd love to be born on Valentine's Day. That's like awesome. I brag about that. <laughs> All right, so here are my options for Valentine's Day because Clearly, I didn't get the memo for um, Valentine's and, and hearts and QC fabric. So <laughs> you guys know I love green and I love blues and I love all that kind of stuff. So here's just a couple of fat quarters from my stash. Love using these. Um, I first saw this one and I was like, oh, this is cute because it's totally like basket, you know, really cute. It's got that pink color. We've got this one as well. So voice, turn, turn your comments on comment let me know which fabric I should use I also love this one this one isn't too valentine's -y. it's got the strawberries which has that red but again the basket it's like a fruit basket literally <laughs> so oh okay mushrooms love this one this is from um Tilda and I bought a whole fat quarter bundle of these and I love this one but okay I'm seeing plaid Okay. Okay. I might do two different ones because we're going to have two different sides. So we'll have one on, like, we'll say we'll do this one on the inside and then another one on the outside. So we could do two. We could do two. Okay. We'll do the plaid. And then, I mean, should we do this? I kind of like this. This little mix together. Okay. I'm seeing fruit and plaid. Oh, and the birds and the mushrooms. Ah! Maybe this one? What do we think? I feel like this one's very, like, fruity. <laughs> fruity and plaid, you know. <laughs> okay. We're going to go with this one today. But I'm going to save this for the next time I do a show. And we'll do something with this. Okay? Ooh. I want to check some comments. All right. I'm getting the yeses. Got it. <gasps> Barb made chocolate-covered pretzels. Oh, those are delicious. I love handmade treats, like homemade sweet treats are the best, the best. Okay, so we got our choices, so we'll, we'll do these ones today. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to put these fabrics off to the side, just for the moment being, because we don't need them just yet, as well as the flexi foam, and let's hoop our stabilizer. Okay, so one thing that I do... <clears throat> One thing that I do before I start embroidering, when I'm getting ready, like this morning when I was prepping and laying out all of the um, fabrics and things like that, I like to cut my stabilizer first and lay my hoop on top because if you use rolls, which a majority of stabilizers do come in rolls, um, we do have stay perfect flat cuts though, just letting you know. Um, Nancy asked, what are we making? We are making some quilted bags. Today. very exciting um as I was saying most of them come in a roll so when you cut them they're gonna have a curve to them so I always like to lay it under my hoop for probably I don't know like 10 not really any too long amount of time but just to flatten it out make it easier to hoop and then we've got just some nice more flat sh flat sheets of stabilizer to work with so like I said earlier I did cut a couple pieces of stabilizer just in case we got to float a piece under there because it's no big deal if we do need that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and I kind of well, do it like this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start hooping. My stabilizer is a little shortcut today. Normally I like to leave a little bit more room off to the side. Maybe we'll switch this one. I think this one's a bigger cut. So, okay, we've talked about Valentine's, we talked about plans. Let's see, what else? What is going on? What is going on today? Let me know 
Do you guys have any like new things you want to try when it comes to embroidery or quilting? Is there anything like new techniques you've seen that you want to try? Ooh, Verita, her sew mat came in this week. Yay. I'll have to show you once we get to my machine. Um, I'm using a special mat today because it's Valentine's Day. So I had to bring out the festive colors. And it's festive for another reason, which I will share in just a moment. So I've got this. I'm going to just tighten this up a little bit, make sure we're all good to go. Okay. So let's take this over to the machine. And I'm going to switch my camera just really quickly because I got to get you over to our machine. So let me switch you back. You're getting a little behind the scenes. Push this down and get you a good angle on this machine right here. Got to love. It's live. It's live. <laughs> All right. So I think, I think I've got you in a good spot. So let me put you back to my machine and I will show you quickly. Oh, I moved my hoops in the way. I'm using Angela Wolf's. Let me take the hoop out of here. I'm using Angela Wolf's sew mat today because her show just launched. You guys got to go check it out. It's called um, From Fabric to Fashion. Super exciting. I'm using her mat today because I am a proud member of the Wolf Pack, of course. Um, we have a pink one. So if you guys want to check out the pink one, it's adorable. And I feel like we don't show it as often. So I wanted to give it some love, especially because it's so fitting for today. Um, all right. So let's get our hoop. Let's get our hoop in the area. And where did my instructions go? All right. Well, we will find them in a second. Let's get this in the hoop. All right. Oh, I'm seeing people saying they watch Fabric to Fashion. I love it. I love hearing that. Okay. Yay. Awesome. Ooh, someone got the pink mat. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Now, I really must have lost my instructions. I have no idea where they went. But that's okay. I think we're good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wake my machine up. And let me get, let me get my pointer. I've got my purple thing. <laughs> I'm going to get this on here and let's load our design. So with Baby Lock and Brother, I'm using the PES. So here's your options. You've got your hexagon, your rectangle, your square. You've got them all there. So I'm going to do the hexagon just because I love the shape and it's so much fun. Um, so here's your sizes. You've got extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. I'm going to hit the extra large. Um, show you up close you can really see what the stitching is going to look like which you can see what the quilting is going to look like so here we go so your first step is going to be your placement stitch for your shaped foam so what you're going to want to do is let's get our machine threaded oh my gosh you guys i have to tell you i was just looking for my instructions right just a minute ago i was sitting on them I just thought you might want to know that. <laughs> Found them. We're good. Let me go back to the machine. So let's get our machine threaded. Now, you don't need a specific, um, <clears throat> you don't need any specific um, thread colors for this step because it's a placement stitch. I always like to use, like they recommend blue. I like to use blue or red so you can really see it and be able to trace um, and lay down certain things. Like if you go on white, it might be harder to see with the stabilizer. So I'm going to thread my machine. Let's go in with blue. We'll match what they're doing. Um, yeah, I have I went and stood up and I'm like, wait, this doesn't feel like my chair. <laughs> I heard crinkling. I'm like, where did that come from? Okay. Again, got to love, got to love live TV. Um, so let's get this going. And I'm going to thread. Just put up. And of course, 
my favorite part about my baby lock altair is this needle threader right here i'm gonna move you down and put you close so you can see the amazingness of this needle threader okay i mean i mean come on that's just i mean oh i shed a tear every time i see that i'm like i just cannot somebody really invented that and was like i'm just gonna save all of you so much time and eye strain right <laughs> i'm gonna move you back sorry if you get a little seasick from me moving the camera but let's get started with our design okay so we are good i'm just gonna double check make sure we're all locked in here i did get a new bobbin and i had to get a new needle so we're gonna see how this goes all right <laughs> last time i did this and i'm like oh my god put a new needle and I put a bobbin case in there and it's all good and we're all good. I started having problems. So we're going to put this down and we are going to stitch out our first step. So this again is just doing the placement stitch, just giving us a guideline of where we are going to put our shape foam, our, our um, shaping foam. Yes, we are spoiled with the baby lock machines and the auto threaders. It's just, once I did it the first time, I'm like, I can't go back. Oh my gosh, Carol Lombardi, you did an in the hoop zipper pouch over 50 steps. That is, that's wild. That is a lot of steps. This is only a 30 minute stitch out. It might take a little longer because I'm sitting here chatting with you, but this is a very short project. So, it won't be long. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Okay. So let me, we're going to do that. Stitch our placement piece. Now let's go in with our shaper foam. So I think this might just fit. This was the piece that I was talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit off just so that way I've got some extra little wiggle room. I might cut it right on that um, cut that I was telling you about that I used when I used this for a different project. All right, I just trimmed this off and I'm going to lay this on here. Now this, you don't really need to, to tape on or anything like that. Um, it's okay. I would just kind of like keep your eye on it, hold it, but especially because this is so thick, I don't know if the tape would really stick to it. It's also kind of, um, it's got a I don't know how to describe this. It's got a little bit more of like a fabric-y texture than like stabilizer. Um, April, I just saw your comment. Let me show you real quick. We are making these quilted baskets from Kimberbell. So whatever um, machine you've got, whether the smallest size is a four by four or your tallest or largest size, I'm sorry, is nine and a half and by 14 onward, you can do this project. So anybody can do this. This is what we're working on today. We're just getting started. We just did the first step. And Mike and Betty, I am using the Baby Lock Altair. I'll try and get a little shot of it. Here's the machine. Beautiful machine. Probably my favorite machine I've ever used. Um, I got it semi-recently. Probably within the last, oh, I don't know, S&P Nation. You might have to correct me. Probably within the last three or four months I've gotten it. Um, I used to use the Baby Lock Presto 2. Love that machine as well. That's a great um, beginner machine to intermediate. Really awesome. That's just the sewing machine though. I was using the Presto 2 and then the Brother NQ1700E, which is an embroidery machine. But now with the Altair, I can do both because it's a combo machine. So that's kind of nice. If you are um, someone who doesn't have a lot of space, having a combo machine is really, really, really awesome for you and is very... Um, Kind of, it knocks out everything. So you can, you're able to do your quilting, your embroidery, your sewing, all of that, all in one place, which is really nice. But I do understand when people want two different machines. I totally get it. I totally get it. All right. So back to this. This is a shaper foam. I'm going to do our next step, which is like the tack down stitch. So we're going to tack down this. And then we, I don't know if we're going to trim this yet. It might be in a couple more steps, but we will be trimming off the extra. So let me, yeah, so we'll do that next. But let's get started. I'm not changing the thread because you're not even going to see this um, 
stitch, right? It's going to be, we're going to cover it with fabric and all that stuff. So we're going to do our tack down stitch now. I just kind of like to keep my hand in the area, you know, make sure it's stitching okay. Oh, see. Verita asks, do you prefer a computerized machine or standard commercial type machines? You know, I, hmm, it depends. I feel like maybe just because I'm used to, you know, I, I work a lot with computers and things like that. I do love computerized machines. That's kind of what I'm used to in a way. But my favorite machine that I just, I always will love it is the Juki TL2010. If you're just looking for a basic machine, like just a basic sewing machine that will last you forever and you only want to do just your simple stitches, the Juki TL2010 is by far my favorite. That would be the best investment and just the best bang for your buck. And you get so many accessories with it. It's really, really amazing. So we've gotten this step done. We did our tack down stitch for that foam. So now we are going to trim it away because next we will be doing some fabric. We're going to get our fabric up on there. So <clears throat> I'm going to remove this from the hoop. I'm going to move my camera so you guys can see me trimming my fabric. Live TV. <laughs> move this up so you can see. Check. Make sure you're in the frame. All right. Okay. So Again, I still have this just in case we're not going to be able to use it after we put that bottom piece of fabric down there. But like in this step, if you were having trouble with your stabilizer, just load another piece in there and you'll be good to go and make it a lot easier for you. But I'm not having any problems, so I'm just going to let it go. Um, I did not. Cindy asked if I made this basket behind me. I did not. This is actually from Moda. We sell this at our retail store. I have a couple of these baskets. I keep all my fabric in there. Woo! Don't look. Don't look. It's a mess. Yes. Um, but I always like these Moda baskets just to throw like, um, um, I throw my, I didn't bring my messy one. I have a blue basket of the same one that has all of my like jelly roll strips and has all of my scraps in it. And I'm looking at it right now and it's a mountain and it's overflowing and it's scary looking. So I'm not going to show that today, <laughs> but I use it for my fabric because it's, it's cute and it just, it keeps everything organized and um, kind of in arm's reach. I can just kind of look through and see, okay, what I've got. So, but anybody who has tips on organizing fabric, I will take them because I keep buying more and I can't stop and I don't have room for these things. <laughs> okay, let me take this out of the hoop and we will come back to my cutting table and we will our shaving foam I also this is a new cutting board or not cutting board oh my goodness I'm hungry <laughs> I got a new cutting mat this is from Tula Pink I love this one I kind of like that it's black because I guess I mean it's not on purpose but I work a lot with like lighter fabrics like this for example I'll work with lighter fabrics with a pattern on top and so I can really see it and I really like this cutting mat a lot and it's gold it's really cute okay so now I'm going to go ahead and trim my shaping foam. Now, like I said, with these directions, I just want to show you because I'm sure you'll want to reference these as you're going. So with these, um, they're very clear. Yes, but they'll tell you, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought, but they will give you all the information for you. And um, they are going to have different examples for the different, um, shapes. So I'm doing the hexagon. It does show the hexagon and then it'll show like the rectangle if you're doing the rectangle or it shows the square if you're doing the square. So yes. And yes, Cindy, it just call your name. You can't say no. You know, it's just, it's so hard. Um, I was buying, when I was cashiering at our retail store, I was buying fabric and I didn't even know how to sew. I just was like, oh, one day. And I did end up using it one day, which is, which was nice. So Okay, let's trim this up. I've got two different, well, I'm gonna pull out three of my favorite scissors. So these are a smaller Kai scissor. These are the ones that I showed you earlier. Um, I'm gonna start with this one because this is a thicker material. So I'm gonna try and get close, but with in the hoop projects and with applique even, you don't wanna, you wanna get close. <laughs> you wanna get close, but not too close, if that makes sense. So. 
you just want to be able to have a, just a tiny bit extra. I think they say in the directions about an eighth of an inch. So just, just for reference. But if you've done applique before, then you know. It's kind of hard to like, I, all I can say is close, but not too close. You know, you don't want to get right on the stitches. You don't want to cut the stitches, but you just want to get the right spot for this. I'm going to switch to these scissors to trim these up. And this flexi foam, the shaping foam that I'm using is very easy to trim up and, um, you know, get it off the hoop. And it doesn't give me too many problems because I know sometimes there is some shaping foam that is more like um, batting where it has that like cotton and there's little fuzzies that come off of it and that can mess up or get stuck in your scissors, things like that. So this is really nice. They really, I the think I love about Camarbell is they really cater. They are embroidery that yes, their specialty is embroidery, but they really like listen to people who embroider and um, really make sure that it's something that embroiderers can actually benefit from. And it's not, you know, something that, like, oh, it's, it'll work for this type of project. Like, no, this works well for anything. You know, I use this flexi foam for, um, I love making like quilted makeup bags. Love using this flexi foam for that because it keeps that structure, but it's still very like movable and not rock hard. So that's, I love that. Let me trim this up. See, the thing I love about these scissors is right when you get flat like this, you can just go right across. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting real close and you'll get right on that line. So if you embroider and you don't have a t these kinds of scissors, um, these curved ones and even the duckbill scissors, I highly, highly suggest they will make a world of difference for you. And it's also more comfortable. Like for some reason, just having that hand shape, I don't know if that's just me, <laughs> but I really, really like it. So more comfortable keeps you sewing longer that's the most important thing all right so i'm gonna trim this so if that's like close but not close enough you just want to go slightly off of the stitch okay now while i'm cutting this let me know which fabric i should put on the inside of the basket and which one should be on the outside Maybe I should do the basket on the outside to make it look like an actual fruit basket. I don't know. You guys, you let me know. You let me know. Okay, I'm just trimming these away. But I'm talking about all of my favorite embroidery <clears throat> tools and things like that. I'd love to know what your, like, what is your number one thing that has to be number one notion, number one tool? Um, number one, anything that has to be in your sewing room at all times. Like, what's your one essential? Mine would probably be coffee. <laughs> probably coffee. But besides that, all right, I've got one more side, and then we will be back to the machine for the next step. Oops, I hit you. Sorry about that. All right. All righty, so we have got our hexagon all cut and we are good, we are ready to move on. Coffee and rotary cutter, Donna, I love that answer. I love that answer. All right, so here's what we're working with so far. We've got our hexagon cut out. There's a couple, let me go through and trim these little pieces really quick. You don't need to do this. I'm just, I like to be a little bit more perfectionist. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got this done. Now, let me move you back to me so I don't get you sick with looking at this camera while I move it. Um, all right. So our next step, we are going to be, let's see, let me get you back up here. Thank you all for bearing with me while I do these camera changes. <laughs> I want you to be able to see everything that I'm doing. So um, we've got our hexagon. Let's put this back. Slide this in while I'm touching this. All right. So I'm gonna throw this. Oh, hold on. We're not taking we're not putting it back in the machine yet. Almost forgot. Almost forgot. I thought we were doing our fabric in the next step. Okay. We're going back to the cutting table. Sorry. Have to keep you on your toes. 
Gotta keep you on your toes. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to our cutting table and now we are going to put our fabric on. So let's do that. All right, so we've got this. We've got our two. What was the final verdict? Are we gonna do basket or are we gonna do um, our little crisscross or, oh my goodness, our, I see this and I think of tablecloth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> checkered or um oh gosh I'm not even gonna try what, what the name of that is but should we do this in the front this in the center or this in the middle of the basket and this on the outer hmm um Patricia I don't with these I've never had an issue with this being curved or this has a crease you guys can see this foam that will make a difference because we are quilting on top of this so I think by the time that we do fabric on top and um we do all that kind of stuff. It's just going to be, it'll be enough to where it, you won't really tell that there's a crease or anything there because we're going to do some really, really small, intricate quilting on there. So it, it'll kind of make up for that. All right. Dum -ba -da -dum. Gingham. Oh, that's what I was trying to, <laughs> thank you. Who commented that? Sherry, thank you so much. Thank you, Sherry. My brain today. Okay. So we're going to open this up and let's, Okay, I think, I think we'll do, I think we'll do this on top and then our fruit on the bottom. Okay, does that sound okay? I think this will be on the, this will be the outer, the outer edge. So, all right, what I'm going to do is cut myself a little square, this fabric, because if you have watched any of the SMP live shows with me before, you know that I'm very big on saving your scraps and saving any pieces that you don't use. So I'm gonna cut, I don't cut up that much. All right. You wanna leave a little bit of room when it comes to laying your fabric. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm cutting off the frame. Let me twist it over. Um, you wanna be a little generous with the fabric that you're gonna use. You want it to go over your hoop and have enough to where you have some extra. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this off and then I'll show you how I'm gonna stick this on. Let's do, we'll do this one first. So see how I've just got extra, it's just laying over the hoop. That's really important. You just want to, um, um, oh my gosh, what was I gonna say? Yes, this will be the top. Um, I am going to press this first. Let me bring my iron over here and we are going to press this out because I also need to press out the um oh my goodness the other fabric as well the back fabric. So here's my little mat I'm gonna use. I'm actually going to move my mat around a little bit so that way I don't have that oh I don't have that um iron quite on top of it. Or I think I've got you know what we're gonna do this while my iron's heating up <laughs> yes i am gonna press it um i'm gonna move this around real quick let me lift this up here okay all right so i'm gonna move this forward just a little because i have made the grave mistake of ironing on top of <laughs> my cutting mat so you don't want to do that I'm gonna leave it off to the side here okay now we've got our little area okay I'm gonna bring you a little closer over here and we're gonna press out this fabric so in the meantime while my iron's heating up I'm gonna cut the um I'm gonna cut the other fabric okay so let's do that all righty and this one we're gonna put on the back all right I haven't checked comments in a second let me let me see what's going on. Yes, I'm so excited. This is going to be really cute. I knew I wanted to do something with the checker or the gingham, gingham, I've corrected myself, um, with the gingham fabric for a while, and especially with this um, fruit one. I thought they were so fitting. They could, I want to say they're from the same line, but I don't know for sure. All right, so my iron's yelling at me. It's ready to go. So I'm going to cut the same roughly the same size piece for the back. Do that really quick. 
One thing I do need to get, though, in this new year is a larger cutting table for sure because oh, I have a small area. I think I need to upgrade. Um, all right. So I'm going to take our scraps out of here real quick and let's press our iron. Okay. Or not press our iron, press our fabric. Okay. I am using the Reliable Iron today, and I have talked about how this one is my favorite a lot. I really, really enjoy this one. I should have picked a different fabric, honestly, because you can't see the creases on here, but I've got it on the, I'm going to set it to six, and we'll just start pressing it out. It is so nice. I mean, I get things ironed so quickly. And it's got that auto shut off, so you never have to worry about it staying on. It will automatically shut off. I want to say after about 15 to 20 minutes, it's normally always turned off. So enough time to wear it, like if you're doing a project, for example, and you need to not iron, like you, you want to iron, then you do a part of your project, and you come back to it. So it'll stay on for about 15 to 20 minutes. So, yes, all right. Yes, I love this iron. It's a little bit more on the pricey side. This is what it looks like, if you guys were wondering. This is the iron. It is so nice. It is a little bit more, I'd say it's in like the mid-range of iron, middle middle range of price-wise. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it will last a lot longer. Because I know of so many people that have bought irons and irons just don't last. For a lot of people or they just shut off or they just die really quickly i've had this one for almost a year and i have not had any problems with it and of course i want to really give it the full test i'd love to see how long it will really last but so far it has been amazing and i really love this iron and it's got a really interesting like interesting steam mechanism in a way like it um, kind of traps the steam in this little area right here and keeps that iron ready to go. So right when you get your fabric laid down, like right when you do a swipe, the steam's already gotten to it and pressed it out. So that's really nice as well. All right, we've got our pieces pressed out. Let's put this together. All right, I'm going to move this back quickly. Okay. I'm going to move this iron out of the way because knowing me, I'm clumsy. I will <laughs> run into it, I'm sure, at some point. All right, let me move this cutting table back. And now we are ready to load up our hoop. So here's where our adhesives and our tapes are going to come into play because we want to keep the fabrics together and we don't want the fabric, especially on the back, of your hoop because we're gonna put fabric on this backside. You really wanna make sure that it's stuck down there so it doesn't fold underneath your hoop and then get trapped when your machine starts stitching because that has happened to me before and it is not fun, it is not fun. And I'm sure that's happened to a lot of embroiderers because it's just like, it's just gonna happen. You know, you gotta live and you learn. But the nice thing is you'll know what to look for now. So here's my tips making sure it's really really stuck down there so i'm gonna do the back first actually just so i can really show you so here's our back i'm gonna lay this down and we're gonna do it on the front so we're gonna do our front side because this is in the hoop so um in this case with this specific design we're not going to be doing um like turning inside out in a way we're going to do something a little bit different so we are going to load that on the back all right so I did make this piece a little big. Oh my goodness. <laughs> too big, too big. No, it's okay. I'm going to trim just a little bit off because I want to be able to stick it to the stabilizer. That's the key. So don't make it um, as big as I did where it's completely going over the entire hoop. You Well, you could, as long as you tape it on the front side, like you could easily lay those down. Um, that's actually a good idea too. Um, but I'll just show you. Actually, you know what? We'll do it like this. Since I've already got it here. All right. So here are the, the tapes and the glues I was telling you about earlier. Um, love them. We've got our RK, we've got our Kimberbell, and we've got our adhesive. So one thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to just take the adhesive first and go kind of just around the corners just a little bit. 
like I said, this dries down clear. I just want to let you know. I know it's dark green or not dark green, dark blue. Um, but it will dry down clear, okay? And it doesn't add any gunk or anything to your machine. So I'm just going through and just kind of pressing it. This is this is step one of ensuring that this fabric isn't going to go anywhere, okay? That's just step one. So I'm going to go on the corners and just really make sure it's flattened down there, okay? So now, a little bit more, and we're just going to press it down. And be gentle, too, because the stabilizer, I'm using a um, water-soluble tearaway. So just um, be gentle because it might, you don't want it to break or anything like that. So I'm just going to go through and just kind of hit the corners a little bit, make sure we're all good there. How are we doing? I'm checking comments again. <laughs> I want to be sure I'm answering any questions you guys have. Anybody new joining? This is what we're making today. Just want to show you one more time. You can get this down at the link below if you want to try it, order it, and then you can come back and rewatch the show and make it with me. So really fun. All right. So there's our layer one of protection. Now we are going to get some tape going up in here. So I've got my embroidery perfection tape from RK. If it's gonna open for me. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna cut a couple. We're gonna do some some tape origami today. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stick this, and what I like to do is stick my piece of tape on the end of my table and then cut little pieces as I go. So like let's start here. I'm gonna take this. And I'm going to first tape, I'm not going to do any of the corners yet, because you can see some of the corners are hanging off. I'm going to do that when I flip it over, okay? So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to do this front area really quick. All right. Okay. Ah, <gasps> Joanne! Joanne, thank you! Hi, Joanne. I love it when you join. Okay. I'm going to keep going with this. We're going to just tape, 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 tape. Do this. And then with this little piece that's hanging over, I'm going to just wrap that tape around my hoop. And just keep it right in there. Okay? And feel free to go as crazy as you want with the tape because you... You, um... The tape will not be on the end, of the end of the project, right? The tape will be gone. So however you need to protect your tape, or no, protect your fabric, um, just do, just go, go ham on the tape. That's what I say. And more protection, making sure your um, fabric doesn't slip inside anywhere. Do whatever you gotta do to make sure it stays. And just make sure that you're attaching the hoops somewhere to the actual hoop itself, so that way it's got something to stick to. Sometimes these tapes, especially made for um, like machines and sewing machines and for like embroidery and crafting like that, they can be very, very, very gentle. Like they're just very light tapes. They're not gonna have a lot of grip to them because you don't want it to gunk up on your fabric or let alone your machine. Oops, sorry. So I'm gonna cut this in half. Yeah, it's better to put too much tape on than too little. That's what I always say. Actually, when I was in high school, I was taking um, wood shop, and my teacher at the time, his name was Mr. Lundy, and he taught me a very valuable lesson that I did not realize I'd be using in my career, and that was measure twice and cut once. And then when I started working here, I kept hearing that everywhere, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> I didn't even, you don't realize, I was like, oh, I'm thinking about this when it comes to wood shop, and now I'm like, sewing, I mean, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to just cut these smaller pieces and get these corners all handled, and now I think I might be, I might be good on tape. We're going to leave it at that, and then I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to tape these corners down. You can't see this bottom one, but this one's still hanging out. So let's flip her over, and I think we're good. I didn't see any mishaps with it moving over. 
Now let's do this one. This one, you don't have to be as crazy with the tape. You can, you absolutely can if you want to, but we're on the top. So we're able to kind of control it in a way. Like we can, we can see it when it's stitching. The backside is a little bit harder because you can't really see it. But again, I'm going to pop some of the 505 stick. Oh, Joanne, Galentine's or Valentine's. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so cute. Uh, guys, Joanne's coming on the show soon. She'll be, she'll be with me and Blaine soon. I think that's not this week, but next week. We've got the sublimation printer this week we're talking about, which is very exciting. I love that sublimation printer so much from Brother. It's amazing. All right. So kind of the same the same process. I'm going to go just on the corners here, just kind of stick it down. That's what I like about this glue stick. I can easily kind of carve out some of the, <laughs> some of the places where I want it to stick. I just want to make sure it's really flat. And there's no bubbles where we're going to stitch the um, the basket, the basket itself. I don't want it to be puffy or anything like that. So I'm just going to add some glue, trying my best not to get it on the hoop. But I have gotten this on the hoop before. Very easy to get off. It doesn't leave any residue, which is something that bugs me so much. So this is really nice. All right. So I'm going to just put a couple pieces of tape just mainly on the top and on the bottom, just so that we're, just so that we are good and careful. I'm very paranoid when it comes to my projects. <laughs> I'm very paranoid. I don't want them to happen. And also, I have the amazing SMP Nation watching me, so I don't want to mess up. You know, I've got to show off my skills. <laughs> I have to. Okay, I'm just going to do one, and then we'll do one more on the bottom, and then we are getting back to stitching. So, what part, when it comes to doing projects, what part do you prefer? Do you prefer, and this goes for not only embroidery, but also um, sewing and quilting. Do you prefer the prep, or like for quilting, for example, do you prefer the cutting and like the, um, you know, organizing all your pieces, making sure everything's all cut right, or do you prefer like the actual sewing part? Or with embroidery, do you prefer the stitch out or do you prefer like the, the prep part where you're, you know, prepping your hoop and picking your fabric and things like that? I know we all love picking our fabric. Of course. Of course. I know that. I know that. But back to like when you're actually doing your project. So let me switch this camera back one more time and just show you up close what my hoop is looking like. I'm going to move my um, light down so you can see me a little bit better. Um, so here's what we're working with. We've got our, our front hoop and our back hoop and our back. So there we go. This is what it should kind of look like. I've got a big hoop, so you can't really see. But we're going to slide this in and get started. So let me move my camera back so that way you can see how I'm going to put this in. Okay? Okay? Okay. All right. So let me move my camera. Bum, bum, bum. All right. There we go. Not very strong. <laughs> All right. Let me move you a little bit closer to the machine. All right. I can see my camera down in the corner. That's why I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> Let's move it. All right. So I'm going to go slow. Low, just nice and slow, sliding it into, back onto the machine. And my camera is in the way. So I'm going to move you back just for a moment and check out the screen. We've got some nice fish. <laughs> I don't know where the fish are from, but we've got some nice fish up on the screen. All right, I'm just going very nice and slow. And normally when you slide it in, oops, there we go. Normally when you slide it in, you can kind of feel if you've got like a fabric thing lift up or anything like that. And of course my hoop is getting stuck, but that's just, that's user error. All right, so we're gonna slide this in. And I'm kind of feeling underneath the hoop. You know, I can see my hands moving. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. I think my favorite part when it comes to embroidery is watching it stitch out as well. Um, I, Sarah S said she likes to stitch out. I love the stitch out. I record a lot of my stitch outs because like, well, I'll do like a time lapse because they're so much fun to watch. 
All right, so now we are going to get this tacked down. And I think after this step, once we get it all tacked down, it'll go on to the um, quilting. So let me make sure I've got all this. Yes, all right. So let's pick out our, our thread that we're gonna use. Now again, this one, what color should I use, guys? I'm not sure. I really, with this, should I do like a white? Or should I do, like here's some, here's some options we've got. We've got some white. We could do a white like that. I've got a pink that goes really well with it. I mean, that's almost an exact match. Should I do that one? Huh, I don't know. Let me know, let me know. I'm gonna keep this one off to the side because I really like this one. But I also have darker, darker pink. So I don't know if the darker pink would look better. This one, I see linen. I don't know. White, okay, okay. I did white when I um, started stitching this out for a sample the other day, and I like how white shows up. Okay, all right, all right. I will listen to SMP Nation, I will. Okay, we're gonna load this in here. Never forget your spool cap. Love these, these really help your um, thread. See, I'm just gonna move you up. They help keep your spool in place. If you guys don't use those, you really, really, really should. All right, I'm gonna just thread my needle quickly. And so what these next two steps are gonna be, so this next step is going to be the tack down stitch for all the fabric. And once we do that, then we'll be okay. I mean, we won't really have to worry about what happens with the fabric because it'll be all tacked down, but we're not gonna cut our fabric yet. We're gonna do that in a second, okay? So let me thread our needle again. Yeah, thread, Nana commented, the thread stand, thread stand is a game changer. Yes, thread stands are amazing as well. I love those. Um, all right, so I've got this all ready to go. And I'm just going to check one more time. I'm just going to feel around, make sure we're not running into any trouble with this fabric down below. Because I'd rather check 20 million times and get it right than never check it and get it wrong. So, all right. We're gonna lock this down. And I think we're gonna be ready to go. So I always keep an eye, I just keep my hand somewhere. Like see how it kind of bubbled up right there? That was on me, but it's okay because we can fix it before it closes that, that seam for those stitches, right? So I think we're okay though. We're doing good. And I think it was Patricia that had commented this before, but you'll see once we start doing that quilting that the crease from that foam that I used um, will get rid, that will be gone once we're done with that um, quilting, okay? All right, yay! That was probably the hardest part. The stitching on the back of the hoop with the fabric was probably the hardest part of this whole project. So now I'm going to put my foot down because we're gonna use that white thread to do that quilting. And I'm just gonna show you quickly, I'm gonna move you over a little bit. This is what the quilting looks like. It's really, really pretty once it's all stitched out. And I can't wait to see it with this pattern as well. So here's what we're going with. This is what the hexagon quilting will look like, but the, um, I believe the rectangle is um, like cross, cross hatch. And then we've got, I, I didn't see the square one, but that one ha also has its own type of quilting. They're all gonna be different. So that's really cool as well. You're kind of, you're making a different project each time, which is nice. So let's get this started. And I'm going to leave the camera on here, but I'm going to check for questions so you guys can see this stitching out. Maybe I can get you a little closer. I'll move the camera here in just a second. But let's get this started. And you'll see how it does this quilting. It's very mesmerizing, very mesmerizing. And again, we did that first initial tack down stitch. So our fabric is is in place now our fabric is in place we don't have to worry about it it's all good so it's just going to go in circles doing this hexagon design um somebody asked what the finished diameter um i did mention i'm using the um extra large design because i'm on the nine and a half by 14 inch hoop on the baby lock altair so i'm using the bigger one so you guys can see 
see it really well. But the diameters of this one is six and a half by six and a half by two. So it's about, it's pretty good size. I mean, looking at it now, it's a really nice size. So, and I'm seeing some new people join. So here's what we're making today. We're doing these quilted baskets. Love it. And it's so hard to walk away. I love watching it be embroidered too, Cindy. I really do love it. But this is what we're making today. But the extra large will be six and a half by six and a half by two. The large will be five and a half by five and a half by one and a half. So I think the largest will be six and a half inches and then the smallest will be around two and three quarters to three inches. So they go from six inches um, wide and long to six, wait, uh, yeah, three inches to six inches-ish, to six and a half inches about. So, but if you see, I'm gonna try and bring you up a little bit closer so you can see some of this stitching. Oh, you can see the shadow there. So see how it's doing that right there? It's quilting that oh, all in a, in a circle. So it's really, really, you can see how this is mesmerizing to watch. <laughs> so let me set that down. Yes, so Patricia, I, right now we are not doing Takeover Tuesday, but I do love doing shows. So, I mean, I love the show today. I do. So maybe, maybe you'll see me back. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see on that. Wink, wink. All right. It's so pretty to watch. It's so nice. I wish the fabric is a little bit, it's kind of saturated for the camera. So you can't really see that quilting. But if you look right here, you can see how much it's done so far. So, I mean, you'll have to let me, do you guys want Takeover Tuesday? I mean, you'll have to let me know. You'll have to let me know. But with this project, I love it. And especially with today's episode of Valentine's Day, you know, I wanted anybody of any sewing capability or strength, you know, beginner, intermediate, um, pro, I mean, there's, there's so many quilters out there that have so many different talents. So this anybody could do. That hardest part, I'm telling you, was just that fabric, um, the fabric on the back. And I think that, that'll be about it. Everything else will be trimming and we don't even have to really turn it inside out or anything like that either. So that's really nice. Um, I'm seeing all your Takeover Tuesday comments. Okay. I'll have to, we'll have to do something then. We'll have to figure this out. All right. Let's check in because we've got some more, we've got some more quilted. So you can see that there. And I'm going to pull this off once it's done and um, show you what the quilting is going to look like once it's all completed. And this, my machine is only running at about half speed, okay? So it'll go faster than this. I just keep it slow because I wanted a little bit more quiet and, you know, I'm doing the show. So I like to, you guys want to be able to watch it stitch out. It doesn't need to go that fast, you know. No one's in a rush here. Someone asked what the, um, what we're working on, what the design. You can get this down in the link below. If you go, just write down, I've got all the products I use today listed, links. You can just go to sewingmachinesplus.com and shop. But this is it. It's from Kimberbell. Um, you've got about, I want to say 20 different basket designs. Because um, you've got the hexagon, triangle, square, or hexagon, rectangle, square. And you've got five designs in five sizes. So you've got a lot of options with here. So you're getting a lot more than just one basket design, which is really nice. All right. Oh my gosh, no, it was so funny. Lisa commented she thought it was Tuesday today. Right before I mentioned this at the beginning of the show, but right before I went on, I had my, my little Takeover Tuesday video that I always play at the beginning when I do Takeover Tuesday. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, wait, but today's not Tuesday, it's Wednesday. If I play this, they're gonna be like, what? I'm gonna confuse, confuse everyone. So I didn't play that video today because I thought it was Tuesday and it just got all messed up. So what can you do? What can you do? All right, let's check back in. Let's see how we're doing. We're almost done. We've got about 
two inches of quilting left. And Patricia, if you're still watching, I'm going to show you where that crease disappears, okay? Just so that way, you know, if you start sewing something and you have a crease in your, in your stable foam or anything like that, there's no, you don't need to stress. You don't need to stress. There's no, it's, it'll be fixed. All right, we've got our last little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. We've got our last little section. <gasps> and we're done. And we're done. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is bum, ba, dum, I think we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it in here and we're gonna do the next couple of steps. So now we're gonna stitch our fold line. So what it's gonna do, do is stitch on each of these points so that way we can join them together and tie them with that ribbon. So I'm just gonna hit go and we're just gonna stitch that in that same white color. And I will, I don't know if you can see it off these instruction photos. But if you look closely, oops, I'm going to show you. You've got those black lines. So these are the fold lines that we're going to stitch out. Ah, um, Patricia's still here. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so let me go through. I'm going to get a little close up in action here. Let me switch my camera real quick so you guys can... You don't have to get all seasick. All righty. Let me try and get you close. The, the hoop moves, so it's, you gotta, once I get the camera in one angle, oh, my camera's shaking now. But I'm just gonna show you kind of what we're working with here. So it's stitching all those fold lines. I haven't seen those, um, I haven't seen those rope baskets. I'll have to check them out. I love the, um, <laughs> Linda, was, Linda, said we should, Linda said we should do hump day honeys, not take over <laughs> You guys are so funny. You guys are so funny. Um, what was I talking about? Rope bowls. Okay. So I've been seeing a lot of those rope bowls and you make them on the um, sewing machine. I've never tried those before. But I have a lot of jelly rolls that I think I need to get rid of. I think it's time for me to say goodbye to some of my scraps because I'm all for keeping your scraps, but there's just I think there might be there might be a thing such as too much scrap. <laughs> so, all right, all righty. So, do we have three steps left? We've got three steps left. We've got the fold lines which we're doing right now and then we're going to do our eyelets which is kind of like bun buttonholes where it's making you a little hole and then we're going to poke it through and then we will have to write our ribbon and then we'll trim it last step is going to be the satin stitch around the whole thing and then we're gonna do some wash away stabilizer removal okay so only a little bit of time left the only thing is is the satin stitch out is about 20 minutes so you don't mind hanging out we'll be good all right and we've only got a few minutes left i think it's doing its last fold line so i will i'll pull it out and show you what it looks like or i'll do a little close-up shot of what we're working with um it's almost done almost done joanne you're right yeah you're right joanne was talking about um never too much scraps but you're right you're right you're right and she said, you'll give away one that you'll wish you had, like you wish you had and they will regret giving it away. You're right. And I think that's my problem. That's my problem for so long is I can't get myself to get rid of it. Like I just can't, <laughs> I form, I form some emotional attachment to these fabrics. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I get, that's the one I bought like three years ago at this one place on a Wednesday. Like, you know, it's, it's not that important, but I agree though that you, can definitely use them. So my next question to you all is, what color should we make our little eyelids? Let me show you. I'm gonna show you what I've got going on over here. Okay, so you can see. So here's our fold lines. We've got our fold lines here. Just so that way if you guys start doing this, 
<laughs> Madeline like football almost done stop almost done yep so it's got our fold lines we've got our quilt our quilted material right here and right here about was where that crease was with the foam that I have underneath in, in the um in our little sandwich I guess our little quilt sandwich but that crease is now gone because we quilted on top of it so um if you for some reason because a lot of the foam that you do get is folded up and you know it's kind of uncontrollable um if you have creases like they just kind of come like that so don't worry they go away as you quilt on top of them um but you can always um try and flatten it out before you get started so we've got pink fabric right here and then we've got our fruit fabric on the bottom so should we do should we keep with white should we keep with the white buttons maybe or with the white um eyelet holes i think i think we should maybe um yeah so yeah patricia i just wanted to show you that because it honestly it will stress me out too i'm like wait i don't want this to look messed up i don't want it you know so we're gonna keep with white i'm gonna keep with the white for the buttonholes or the eyelet holes i'm so sorry i keep calling them buttonholes so it's because on the other designs on the square and i think i think they all come with a buttonhole version so you can add your own buttons and put buttons on the baskets but we're doing ribbon today because i thought that might be a little bit easier so let's come back here i'm gonna get this going again so well, okay we'll keep with white just since i've already got it on here it's already in there um yeah oh my gosh <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to Blaine. I'll talk to Blaine. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Um, Patricia, no, you don't need spe a special foot for making eyelets. No, I don't think so. Um, in, in this case, it's kind of using a satin stitch to make the holes, and then we're going to poke it with either a, uh, you know, seam ripper or scissors or anything like that. That's kind of how we're going to do the eyelets. But no, you don't need a different foot, which is nice. That way you don't have to stop and change your foot and, you know, if you have to add a different shank on there or something like that. You know, I'll have to make some more baskets because I'm getting all your guys' ideas of what colors I should do, and now I want to make more. So I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to come back and make some more. I was thinking about green. You know, I have... I've got two different greens in this yarn. Maybe we could use these. This one looks brown now that in the light, but I've got these two we could use in place of the ribbon. So we can decide that once we finish up here. Okay, we'll do green. Ella said green, we're gonna do green. I also have another question because I'm gonna put me on the side here. I also see, I've realized that when I'm sewing, I love listening to music. So I am curious if you guys listen to music as well. Like what kind of, do you do podcasts? There's a amazing podcast that I have to tell you about. It is called Inappropriate Quilters and it is Leslie and I believe the name is Rochelle. I, no, Leslie, I believe, did Rochelle come as well? Um, they have an amazing podcast. You guys got to go listen. If you are a quilter or even just a crafter, they are hilarious and I love listening to them. So go check out Inappropriate Quilters. They, I think anywhere you can get a podcast, um, you can listen to them. They're hilarious. They had a, um, they had, oh gosh, they have so many guests on there that are just amazing and well known in the quilting industry. And it's so nice to hear people's stories and, um, yeah, they're just, they're great. And I love them. They actually came to a retreat that we did. That's how I found out. Um, I think they had started the podcast a little bit after that, but they had, um, Leslie, I know for sure had joined um, a retreat that we had in San Diego. And then I think they did the podcast shortly after that. And I had seen it and they had taught, they had shouted us out. And I'm like, what? That's amazing. That's awesome. Yes. Rochelle. Okay. I just want to make sure I got it. I knew it was, I knew it was Rochelle. Um, but anyways, they're hilarious. You guys gotta go check them out. Okay. YouTube video. You know, if you're watching SMP live, I'll take that answer too. <laughs> um, okay. ID channel. All right. 
if I had a TV, yeah, I'd probably have some. I love listening to um, like mysteries and um, you know, listening to different stories and like unsolved cases. I don't know. That's I always love listening to that. But music, one thousand percent, one thousand percent. All right, sewing shows. Okay, all right. Yes, yes, they do. That is a great. If you're looking for a crafting podcast in general or a quilting podcast um, and you want to get into like podcasts, you've never listened. I love their podcast so much. I'll go and listen to it every couple of weeks. I'll like try and catch up and see what they're talking about. Cause I also love just, you know, hearing about new trends or new oops. Hold on one second. I heard some squeaking. I'm going to stop it really quick. And just, I think that was just the tape. So I think we're okay. I think it was just this piece right here. I'm going to let it keep going. We're okay. <laughs> NCIS. Ooh. <gasps> I love that the 911 show. I really like that. I am a Grey's Anatomy girl, like through and through. I love Grey's Anatomy. I love Grey's Anatomy. I had to stop. I had to stop watching when some of the characters that I loved weren't on the show anymore, though, because I just couldn't. You know, when you love a show so much, but then when your favorite characters leaves and you just can't. You can't watch. It's just hard. I couldn't do it. It was so hard for me to get into it and keep watching. I just cannot. Couldn't do it. All right. Let me put this back on full screen. I'm curious. Yeah. What new shows do you guys listen? Are you guys watching? I'm. I haven't sat down and watched a new show in a long time. Quiet. <gasps> Hazel, yeah, McDreamy. <laughs> That's why I have to stop watching. Oh my gosh. Yes. Hazel, you are on the money with that one. Yep. I've seen a lot of stuff talking about suits. I saw it, it like totally had a resurgence um, on Netflix. It like became the most streamed show on Netflix, right? Crazy. And they were in a bunch of uh, Super Bowl commercials. Ooh, Supernatural. Yes. That's a great one. I feel like we all kind of like the same types of shows. Like, I'm seeing a lot of, like, 911, Iron PD. Like, we might have, we might all have the same taste in, in shows. Um, I did watch Angela's show last week. I actually, you know, it was kind of funny because I posted months and months and months ago when we were doing some filming with Angela and we had done some behind the scenes stuff and I posted it and I was curious if anybody had picked up on it um, because you'll see those clips are now on the show. You know, you'll see Blaine on there and um, you'll see some more fun stuff. I don't want to give anything away. Um, Sally, 911 is not realistic enough. You know, that's true. I, I don't know. They... Some of the stuff I see, like with Grey's Anatomy, for example, they're very similar in terms of like the things that happen, like events. They're very like crazy things that happen to people. Um, some of them were kind of like, that happens in real life? I don't know. I don't know. But again, it is a show. So, um, What have I been watching? I love Friends. Friends is probably my favorite show of all time. I just, it's like the show I'll watch to fall asleep. You just like your comfort show. Um, friends and new girl probably I love new girl so much ER okay I love learning this about you guys because I love shows like that <gasps> Christy just said that she's been on a Bob's Burgers kick I love Bob's Burgers I love Bob's Burgers I love Bob's Burgers so much okay let me pop this over to our camera and I'm going to show you what our next step is going to be. Christy, I'm so happy you brought up Bob's Burgers. I haven't watched that show in so long. I love it. And I relate too much to Tina and Louise. I do. I love them both. <laughs> okay. So our last step, or our last one, I am going to get started. Now, should we do a different color? for? Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do this pink for the, for the liner. I think we should. Mm, I think we're going to do it. Yes, now I'm hungry. Now I need a burger. <laughs> Whoops. 
There we go. All right, let's get this threaded. I, Belinda, I saw that. I think I saw the commercial for that tracker show during the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, I gotta ask. Did you guys, what do you guys think of the Super Bowl? How did you guys, how did you, who are we rooting for? I gotta know. I'm gonna wait to reveal my answer until I see who you all are voting for. <laughs> who you all are rooting for. Oh my gosh. Yes, Schmidt from New Girl. Christy commented about Schmidt from New Girl. He's He's one of my favorite characters of any any television show. That just that character is just unbelievable. I love him. Um, we quote New Girl all the time in this office. Me and Kyle both love New Girl. Um, okay, good. I'm seeing a lot of cheek stuff. Good, good, good. Good, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> um, but I always love watching the Super Bowl. Um, this was actually I can't lie. This was the first year that I actually sat and watched the Super Bowl from start to finish, even like earlier from the start. I turned it on about an hour before kickoff and um, I just had to see. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this from start to finish because football's gained a lot of popularity over the, you know, the past few months. And I was like, I got to I got to sit and watch this whole thing. And then it was so much fun. And I love watching the commercials and, you know, seeing all the celebrities and stuff in there. I love watching it. And of course, now I can't get this threaded. Okay. All right. We're good to go. All right. So this is the last step. This is the longest step. So we, let me get this threaded and get this started. So we can finish this up. All right. So I'm doing that pink color, but now we're just going to do our satin stitch. And I think we have to trim some stuff up. So let me pull this out really quick. So yeah, we're gonna do, we did our eyelets. Now we're gonna remove this from the hoop and trim off all that fabric. So let me clear this out of the way for you. And we're gonna pull this out of the hoop. Let me move this back to my camera. You know, I find more ways that me and SMP Nation are connected every single day. The fact that we all like the same TV shows. We all love coffee, we all love treats. I mean, like we, we're all best friends now. I mean, it's just, sorry, was it? Wasn't up to me. Just the way that's gonna work. You're fine with that. <laughs> All right. Let me move my camera because we're gonna trim now. Um, I almost was like, no, I think we're just gonna move on to the satin stitch. No, we're gonna trim up our fabric. Okay. Because, like applique, you want to trim it, and then we'll do the satin stitch over it, and then we're gonna use the we have our water soluble tear away to melt off of the satin stitch. So. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, Diane commented about the Dunkin' Donuts commercial. I loved it. I told Blaine, I said, Blaine, we need to do a Super Bowl commercial next year. We got to be on there. So if you see me and Blaine next year during, you know, the commercial break after the second quarter, or that would be halftime, but after first quarter or wherever you see us pop up, just don't mind us. I, I told you, I called it. <laughs> okay, let's go back over here and we're going to trim. So let's see how the back looked, because I'm sure you're all wondering. So here you can see that quilting a little bit better. This is the back. Um, super nice. We're going to trim some of these little jump stitches and stuff off. Um, <laughs> yes, me, me, Kyle, and Blaine are going to be in a Super Bowl commercial. They, they are pricey. They are pricey. Yes. So, all right, let's start trimming this up. So we've got that. The back of the fabric, like I showed you, is all safe. And that is because we are super cautious when it comes to taping and gluing. But I got to say, the, the glue, that's what I heard squeaking. We had a little bit of a tape scrunch up, but that's okay. Um, the glue really does a lot of the job, you know. <laughs> Tammy said, did you guys get the DoorDash code? Yes, that long code. I saw somebody that was actually, like, trying to trying to match it all up and write it all down. I had a whiteboard. <laughs> it was hilarious, hilarious. Okay, so I'm gonna peel the rest of this tape off. All right. I'm gonna try and go a little fast because we've got that last big step and then we'll be pretty much done. So let me move this. All right, so we've got all this taped off and this peels right off. You know, that glue dried. 
like I showed you, it's all completely clear. And you can, now you're done. You don't need it to be sticky anymore. So super nice. All right. Okay. So let's turn this over. And we're going to start trimming our fabric. So let me take, got little pieces of um, tape everywhere. But what is new? Okay. Let's start trimming this up. I'm going to bring you down just a little bit so you can see just exactly what I'm doing. All right. So again, my preferred scissors or anything that's like curved like this makes a huge difference. Sometimes I'll go in with a bigger pair of scissors and kind of just trim the big pieces. But I'm just going to do this in one go since... All right. We're just going to cut. Trim, trim, trim. All righty. All right, how we doing? Yes, yes. I I have to admit, I'm going to be honest, I am a very, well, I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. I grew up listening to her. Um, she was actually the first CD I ever had. Um, her first album, she had like a, oh gosh, it was like a um, CD player with like her, the theme of her album or whatever. It was one of her little merchandise things. And so I've always loved her. And then when I, you know, the whole news, Travis Kelsey and her, I'm like, oh, that's, that's interesting. And now, you know, I heard, <laughs> I heard the news and now I'm watching football every Sunday. <laughs> I didn't realize I would really enjoy it. My family is just not a football family. So I never really knew, you know, we didn't have like a team. My family wasn't like, you know, hardcore. Well, I am, I am going to. I am going to say something, though. The Chargers left us, okay? That's the only thing I know. They were in San Diego. Now they're not anymore. So maybe that's why. I'm just like, I'm still, I'm still hurting, you know? <laughs> but we had the Chargers. They're not here anymore. So um, I had to pick a different team, you know? I hate to, hate to say it. Yes, they're in L.A., but still. All right. And again, with this trimming, same thing goes like we did for the um, shaping foam. You want to cut close, but not, not too close. <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> yes, all my San Diego locals will, will understand the charger, the charger sadness. <laughs> all right. Here, I'm going to show you guys the scissors. Cassie um, wanted to see them. These are the R&K. Um, these are, I'm sorry, not R&K. They're Quilter Select. These are some duck bill curve scissors. So here's what they look like. If you have scissors like this shape, I have them in the link down below. If you guys go to the description box, I've got all the scissors linked for you to go check them out. But this shape makes it so easy and so fast for you to cut and for you to get all your pieces off because it just kind of your hand is just more comfortable in a way it's kind of like um kind of like grace true cut with grace company's um scissors they are or not their scissors i'm sorry they're rotary cutters um they're very ergonomically created in a way they really really help and they're supposed to be made to where you hold them in the exact position that your hand is most comfortable in so, because I know, like, you know, with hairdressers, they, a lot of hairdressers can start to have wrist problems because, you know, you're cutting and that, that angle that you're at can be really difficult. And same thing goes for quilters and crafters and things like that. You want to make sure that you're being really comfortable and you're staying comfortable so you're not causing any problems in the future. All right. So now we're on the back. I'm just going to trim this up. Like, see, I could just go super quickly. I'm not going to worry about the jump stitches just yet because I want to get this satin stitch going. Last little bits and pieces of um, the project. We'll handle those once the um, stitches, once the satin stitch is done. But I'm just chugging along. Yeah, if I were to recommend one thing from today's show, it would probably be these scissors because... As soon as I realized how much more comfortable it is, because I'll use these for a long time, and 
um, they just, they've made such a difference. And this, if you're wondering, so how, see how I'm like this cutting, it kind of keeps your fabric away in a sense. When I see it, kind of how I, when I'm using it, it keeps it up and kind of just off to the side. It keeps to where nothing's under here is getting caught on your scissors, things like that. So yes, scissors are important. I'm telling you. All right. Got a little bit too long there, but we can come back and trim that up. That's no big deal. All right. I really want to try some of Kimberbell's. Um, I see Carly Bell doing them all the time. The um, quilt blocks that are done on the embroidery machine. They're so cute and they're so adorable. So here's one thing I will say. So I'm going to stop using these and I'm going to switch to these Kai ones. They're obviously much smaller. You've got a really nice point on there. So I'm going to go through and trim any pieces I see that are just a little bit too off. So like this is a little bit uneven. So I'm just going to go through and trim that up. I also love um, Karen K. Buckley's The Perfect Scissors. I think they're the green ones. They're the little ones. Those were my, those were my absolutely hands down my go-tos for a long time until I found these curved ones. And I was like, oh, I might, I might be, I might have just been converted. All right, so here we go. We're almost done, guys. We are almost done. Isn't it adorable? If you guys are local in um, San Diego and you have a chance to pop over to our retail store, we have all of these on bolts. We have this entire line um, on bolts, but I just picked up some fat quarters. So we do have fat quarters as well, though. So you've got to check it out. And Lynn, who is just my favorite person ever who works at our... San Marcos store she is in charge of all the fabric and she does a wonderful job she's a mastermind when it comes to fabric and she just has my mic went muted I gotta switch my ear pods because this is a long show one second I'm gonna switch you out <laughs> I know I keep saying we're almost done we're almost done all right can you guys hear me okay now let me know how to do an AirPod switch real quick. But yes, I love Lynn. I love Lynn. She's my favorite. I call her grandma. If you ever see me calling somebody grandma at the San Marcos store, I'm talking to her. So, all right. All right. You guys can hear me good? Good. Live. We love live video. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to get you in position. And now we're going to do our last step. Okay. We're almost done. All right. Now, I'd love to know because looking at the clock... I was not looking at the clock the entire show. Um, do you prefer longer shows or do you want like shorter shows? So since we're talking, you know, we're in talks of me doing some more shows. Um, do you want like a more, a longer show where we just sit and hang out? Or do you like more um, shorter shows? I mean, I guess it depends on what you're doing. So um, just let me know. Shorter? Okay. I know this is a long one, but it's also Valentine's Day because I wanted to sit and talk to you guys and it's been a long time, but okay. Good to know. I always like hearing from you guys. So, all right. I've had my thread threaded. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to show you. All right. So let's move you to the screen so you can see both the hoop and the screen. Yeah. It does depend on what I'm doing. So, okay. Well, maybe we can do shorter shows and do like a, you know, okay. All right. Well, you just, you wait and see. I'll come up with something for you guys. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to set this down and now we're going to do our satin stitch, which is this all the way around. So we finished that. We're going to do our satin stitch and then we will be almost done. <laughs> I swear you guys got to make like a game or something for how many times I say almost done or we're almost there. I'm sorry. I don't mean to like be clickbaity. <laughs> All right. And I'm just keeping my eye on it. And it's stitching a little bit around the edge, but that's okay. I think that's what it's going to get to. So, all right, we're good. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's like, I don't know, you know, everybody else. 
which is really cool because a lot of, um, you know, everybody watching the show today is doing different things. And I like Heidi's comment where she's like, I like to do other things and lives keep you company as you're um, doing things. And I love that. No, totally love it. All right. So now we're on to this. It's doing its first little tracing steps. I promise we're almost there. We've only got a little bit to go with that satin stitch, but that's about it. Yeah. And I like watching shows as well because, um, you, I'm, I'm also doing things, you know, it's like a podcast. You can put it on and you can just listen and do what you got to do. So yeah, love it. I love that everybody has their own way of consuming, you know, these shows and things like that. So love it. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, for sure. See, it's hard with me because I love to talk to you. <laughs> so if I do a longer show, it's mainly because I'm talking to you. So, um, but I think that's, I think that's good. So sometimes I think it also depends on the project too, because, you know, with this one, I want to make sure I'm explaining right. And, um, making sure, you know, we, you understand. And if you need help and while you're asking questions, I really like to be present while we're doing these projects. So, but I'll mix it up. We'll do so. We'll mix it up. It is like lunch with friends. I love that. I like that, Sharon. All right. I'm going to take a sip of my caffeine. This is the drink of choice for today. If you have not tried one of these, you have got to try. If you like caffeine, just warning, <laughs> there's caffeine. I'm just going to take a sip. If you like tea, this is delicious. Very good. All right, let me move my camera so you can see what's going on here. Because I'm all shaken. Oh, Raylan's making Kimber Bears for charity. Oh, I love it. I love that. Ooh, Sharon's drinking her coffee out of her brewer mug. Or your decaf. I don't know if it's coffee or tea. But you're drinking out of your brewer mug. I love it. Yes. Okay. See, I love that. I love that. Oh, Ella, make me cry. Okay. You guys are wondering the drink. This is my favorite thing. It is a tea. So it's just plain old tea. It's a Yerba Mate. I think that's how they say it. I've been drinking these for a long time. Very long time. Um, it's just a mint tea. It's the best mint tea I've ever had. It's so delicious. And they also have a peach one that I really love. That's, I think it's zero calories. It doesn't have anything in it. It's like zero sugar and all that. But these are amazing. I love these. But again, just warning you, this is the reason why I'm always like, good morning. Welcome to the show. <laughs> That's why I'm always full of energy. Maybe I'll reach out, see if they can sponsor me. <laughs> Let's check back in, see what's going on here. I'll do a little close up. Um, see if I can get you in here. So right now it's just doing that satin stitch. So it kind of did that first little layer and now it's really going in and making those precise stitches. So yeah. Um, yes, I know people might have some dietary things. I don't know. Let's see. This one is not sugar-free, but the peach one is, and the peach one is very, very good. Very good. Delicious. Right. My favorite types of teas are probably mint and peach. And I'm shaking a lot because of the machine. But those are my favorite types. Love them. <gasps> Drinking your coffee out of your Jane Klaus mug. I love it. I'll have to tell her. You, you're using it. All right. So see, I'm going to bring you a little bit closer to where this is right here. Starting that satin stitch right there. looking good. I love the fact that we did that fruit fabric with the, um, the gingham. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Are you, how's, how's the weather for all you guys right now? Cause I know 
there was some storms going on and I always like to check in on my SP nation and make sure we're doing okay and safe. <gasps> oh, Sharon. Well, I'm I'm thinking of you guys. We'll have to we'll have to find you some sugar-free snacks. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad. I'm. I know a lot of people. I think the weather is starting to get a little better. For a while there, it was just ugh, it was so gloomy for everyone. And it, that I just I love the rain. I love when it rains and all that stuff. But after a while, when you're like, okay, I just I, it. I feel like it does kind of affect your motivation a little bit. Sometimes you're just like, no, oh, well, I'll lay in bed because it's rainy and cold, and I won't. You know, um, when it's sunny, I always feel like, oh, I want to do some do things and go and you know um i love it so good i'm glad you guys are having some good weather today we're almost done <laughs> i pinky promise whoever's running the tally if we're almost done add one in there um we're just finishing this and then i think we've got about seven ish minutes so and then we'll then we'll be good and then the last couple steps is just going to be getting rid of that stabilizer, but will be very easy because you are using a washway stabilizer. So it'll just, you can run a finger. I'm going to show you guys, actually, let me run and get my water really quick because we'll need some water for getting that off of your project. Alrighty, still going strong, still going strong. That's good. I feel like you just need some sun. You just need some sun sometimes. Yes, Christy, I totally, totally agree. Yeah, I, I thought, I think about moving sometimes, you know, like with, um, as I get older, I'm like, oh, do I want to go somewhere? Like, I've, I haven't really traveled a lot. I haven't stayed anywhere. But then I'm like, I could never, ever, ever leave the beach here. <laughs> I could not. I could not do it. I don't go there all the time. But just knowing that it's near, I could never, I don't think I could ever leave. Oh, Diane asked, how's my dog doing? Winston is very good. And you know what? I'm going to pause this really quick. And we're going to speed up my machine because Doris, I'm going to take your suggestion. <laughs> Let me go into my settings really quick. Yes. All right. Let's come back and we're going to restart that. All right. I think this honestly just goes, this last step is just going to go a little bit slower because it's a satin stitch. They normally just take a little bit longer, but it's all good. Um, my dog, yes, he is one now, and oh goodness, the terrible twos showed up at the one year stage, so <laughs> we're getting through it, we're getting through it. He's the best, I love him so much. The machine I'm using, um, Joanne, I will show you right now because I'm all shaky. I don't want to switch my camera to that one, I'm all shaky, but this is the machine I'm using. This is the Baby Lock Altair. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite. I showed, uh, you can go and rewind if you missed the beginning parts, but I showed the automatic threader, which is amazing. And um, there's just, there's so many amazing features that I love about this machine. And um, I was talking about how I used to have two machines, like a separate sewing and embroidery machine. I'd have two machines so I could... Um, you know, do both. Well, let's check on this because the stabilizer is poking. So let's just make sure we're good there. Um, but once I got this combo machine, it's really nice to be able to do sewing and embroidery all on one machine. So, yes. Oh, Winston is a Chawini. So he's a Chihuahua and a Weenie mix. And he is 10 pounds of energy and... Yes, <laughs> that's about it. 
<laughs> he loves to run. He's he's a runner. He's a runner and a jumper. I also want to show you quickly the thread that I'm using today. I didn't mention it. Is um oh I have to show you guys pictures. I should have loaded them to show you today. Um, but I have been using uh, exquisite thread this entire time. So all the thread that I used was exquisite, and then. The bobbins that I'm using are Filtech. I'm using, let me pull them out for you real quick. They are these ones right here. I've shown these a few times on the show. They got them in all different colors. I am just a pre-wound girl. I don't know. I just being able to pull one out of here and throw it in rather than winding it up is just easier for me. And especially in my case, when I do live shows and something happens, um, it takes less time to just pull this out and switch the bobbin if I'm having issues than to wind up a new bobbin. So um, if you're like me and like the convenience of that, these are awesome as well. Love the Filtech pre-wounds. And then I use, where is my, I don't know where it went. Oh, here it is. And then I use my bobbin saver to keep on my bobbin. So I have white, the white ones were in that container I just showed you, but then I also have these off-white, more cream ones, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I love this bobbin saver. Oh my goodness. Yes. They're the best. Because bobbins are so, I mean, they're small. You can still see them, but I lose them way too easily. I do. And I have horrible eyesight too. So if I don't have my contacts in or my glasses on, there is no way I'm finding that. There's no way. <laughs> oh, Madeline, yes. Australian Labradoodle. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can, I can imagine. I can imagine. All right. We only got, we're finished with our first three sides and we're back to our other three and then we'll be done. Okay. Let's see what else is going on. See, my table was not moving around that much or my computer was not moving around that much when I started. Um, I wonder why it's moving. I don't know. Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> Free one. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> yeah, Rebecca, exactly. 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 Um, yeah, fill exquisite for embroidery thread. Oh gosh, I've got I have so much exquisite thread. It's wild. Um oh, oh Barbara. She has a Doberman named Greta. We need to do an SP Nation dog post or something. I've got to see all your guys' dogs. You guys need to post them in the Facebook group just, just for today because it's Valentine's Day. I've got to see all the dogs. I have to. <laughs> but um, I used to have Dobermans. I actually used to have two. I had, um, they're European Dobermans. I had a um, boy and a girl, and they were massive, and I loved them so much. I loved them so much. And I want a, I want a Doberman soon. I want a Doberman soon. Me and my mom, we actually were just talking about that. We're like, should we get one? I'm like, no, Winston. Winston is like five dogs in one. So, whoo, whoo, goodness. I couldn't even imagine. Yes, you guys should try. Um, if you haven't tried pre-wound thread before, I'll show you. I've got, I've got another one here. They're so nice and all you have to do is just pull them out and stick them in your machine um and they last a long time i mean i just put this one in i put a new one in and then you can also use it and and do like a mass or just you know pre wind up multiple of them once you finish with these pre-wounds you know it just it's more convenient i always keep some pre-wounds to the side to the extra but like if i'm doing a project and the bobbin thread is going to really show through and I want to do like a brighter color of a, like a pre-wound color I might not have or something like that. And then I'll, I'll wind my own bobbin. But um, when it comes to just doing basic colors and things like that, I'll just use pre-wounds. Um, they also have them for uh, multi needles. I've got some for my PRS 100. That's a single needle open. Um, oh, gosh. That's like a multi needle, but just with one needle. Um yeah, so I've got pre-wounds for everything. And they also have pre-wounds of, um, I'm sorry, my camera is so shaking. It's because my machine. But I also know they make some for long arms as well. So if you are a long armor, which I know, 
if you have a business with long arming, that can be a game changer for you. You can just throw them in there and just keep going. So love it. Love it. All right. I'm trying to like remember my conversation because I look at comments and then I want to answer your question. So <laughs> trying to try to stay focused. But let's check on the let's check on our project really quick. I know you know me. I was not I honestly was not expecting to be here for two hours, but I love it. I love it. And if you guys are fine with it, then that's fine. It's mainly because I just like to talk. <laughs> I just like to talk. I'm sorry. It's just what I like to do. Maybe I should start a podcast. Oh, girly girl. She has a teacup Yorkie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, adorable. Yorkies are so cute. I love Yorkies. I knew someone who had like five Yorkies and uh, respect to five dogs, but I don't know if I can do that. See, Wolfgeist, Wolfgeist out, outdoes us all because she's got six cats, a parrot, quail, rats, and she's got her snakes. Like she, she's one. We need to get you, we need to get you like a badge or something. <laughs> yes. I'll t yes. Quilters and crafters and embroiderers and sewers and all that stuff. They love their crafting and they love their sewing, but they love their pets more. I'm just saying. And I, I, when I realized that, I was like, okay, this is this is the group that I can hang with. <laughs> um, what do I do with my empty bobbins? I honestly just keep them, um, kind of in a in a bowl or in a pile. Like I've got a couple here. I kind of just maybe just leave them places. You know, I've got a, some here. I've got a couple in a cup. I just keep them around just in case. But most of the time, I've got pre wounds ready. Um, but Again, like if I'm doing a certain project where I want to do um, a special colored bobbin, that's when I'll pull those empty bobbins and, you know, for any special type of project or things like that, where I need not white or the cream that I've, that I've got as well. I think I also have black for the PRS 100 and I also have, um, oh goodness, what else? I know Quilter Select has a, like a rainbow bobbin set. So they've got a like entire... It kind of looks like a circle and it's a ring of like the rainbow in pre-wound bobbins. So that might be something you're interested in if you want bright colored or you want multicolored pre-wounds. They're, whoo, they are beautiful. All those different colors. I need to get that, I think. Maybe I'll get it and show you guys. You guys can see all the different colors that we've got. Yes, yes. Joan, Joan says that her, her babies sit with her while she sells her animals. Mine I don't have a sewing room at home. It's mainly here at work, but when I'm home and doing school, cause I'm in college, um, my dog sits on my lap the entire time and it gets very difficult when I'm trying to type. I'm going to switch this over here cause I'm getting shaky again. All right. But as you can see, we're doing good. It's already kind of starting to pull that stabilizer, but I don't want to touch it cause it's very fragile, very fragile right now. So I'm just going to let it go. We've got one side left. You guys are the most patient people on earth for waiting <laughs> because guess what? We're almost done. We're almost done. No, I'm serious. So after this, we'll, we'll be done. No more machine after this. So we'll be out of the hoop, out of the hoop. Ooh, Linda asked, what college courses am I taking? I'm actually taking ASL, which is something that I'm very excited about. And um, I don't know. I'm, I really enjoy it so far. And I was joking with Blaine. I'm like, maybe once I, once I get really good at it, cause I'm nowhere, nowhere even close to being like able to have a conversation yet. My classes just started a few weeks ago. Um, I just finished from winter break, but, um, whoops. But I told Blaine, I'm like, I could start interpreting the shows. You know, I could, we could really be, Oh, so that'd be good practice. Uh, ASL is American Sign Language. Yes. <gasps> Ella, that's so, that's, see, I love that. And, you know, that's really cool that you were able to learn that and communicate. I wish I learned it younger. Like, I, I wish I wasn't starting it so late, you know? Because once I started, I'm like, man, I really wish I 
had taken it and I tried to take it in high school. Actually I did, but ASL was like the one language class that everybody wanted to get into. So I just, I, I didn't want to fight, you know? Um, so I did French, <laughs> I did French and I prefer ASL way more. So Oh, how nice, Pamela. I love that. All right. We've got our last stitches. Our last ones. All right. We've got this. <gasps> Do you hear it? Do you hear the sound? It's because we're done. All right. I'm going to pull this out of the hoop. And now I'm not going to be shaking anymore with the camera. I'm so sorry about that. It looks like I was like in the car. <laughs> okay. So we're good. I'm going to move my camera. And we're going to finish up, do our little eyelets. And then I'm going to show you how it all comes together. Okay. All right. Yay. Okay. Kyle singing, pull it together. <laughs> right now. Well, now, now they can only hear me sing. So it sounds like I'm just singing. All right, so let me switch my game. <laughs> They're over there. They're over there, They're right over there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out of the hoop and I'm gonna show you how to remove this from the stabilizer. All right, so what I did, you only need to wet, you know, just like, here's, I use this to fill my iron with. It comes with um, my iron. <laughs> Kyle, they're all commenting the lyrics. <laughs> oh, you guys are the best. But I just have a little bit of water in here, so I'm going to remove this out of the hoop. But I think we might honestly not really have to do that because it, it got a lot of the stabilizer off. But do you see if you look close? Here, I'll put it up against the black so you can see it. The stabilizer fuzzies. You know, we don't want those on there. So I'm going to take, oh, and here we go. Put it on the cutting table, why don't we? So I'm just gonna take my finger and run it across. <gasps> Got myself a little puddle, I guess. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove this. We're just gonna go along and make sure that those little fuzzies are gone. Super, super easy to do. Like this, this is not there's no need to overcomplicate this one. Like you don't put this, like dip it in water or anything. No, just run it across with your fingertips. It'll come off. It, it might take a second. Like it'll get a little dry and then you just kind of got to go over it. But no, super easy. And that way you're not, you know, wetting this entire project. So let's look at it from the back. How cute. Oh, it's so cute. And then I'm going to go through and kind of trim my jump stitches. So did we, did we decide green, that green ribbon will do? Okay. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take a seam ripper. You got this. And we're going to poke it, poke it through the little eyelet holes. And then where did my yarn go? So I think we'll do this green. Well, we'll see how it looks with the basket all together. Okay. Let me get a little towel or something and wipe this off. So we've got this. I love it. Don't you guys? It's so cute. So I'm going to get this, um, water off. It was an accidental spill, but it kind of worked out. Um, I'm going to get this off the cutting mat and we'll come back to this and start making our little eyelet holes. Okay. So going back, so let me just refer really quickly. Yeah. Okay. Let's cut our yarn first. Okay. So I'm going to take my, if I can find the end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I should have thought about this before I started the show. Oh, here we go. All right. We are good. So I'm going to pull this. All righty. thin, but it works. Maybe I could do that ribbon too. All right. So let's cut some pieces. Let's do our first little tester. All right. So here the basics. So I think we're going to do this on the outside. I think that's because it's a basket. Okay. So we're going to poke these through 
and then we'll tie right there and then we'll get the shape will start coming along. Um, the eyelet tool. Oh, I'll have to, I have all of my accessories for my Altair up and away. I can't, I don't, I can't get to them right now, but yes, I will absolutely do that. Um, I'm just going to kind of make some incisions there on the right. I'm just going to poke through, make it just a little bit, because I also have a thin ribbon. So, or I have a thin piece of yarn, so I don't need to make the holes too large, but I'm going to open them up more because I think if I can find some thinner rib, see, this is kind of like, it's frayed and all that stuff. This is the ribbon that I had originally, but um, I need to get it. It's not very high quality. It's just kind of a random one that I'd found. So, all right, let's poke it through and I might need to see how they put it in there. So hold on. I have the good, I have a good tip for you. Oh yes, that's true. I don't have one of those in my, the cam press. I would definitely recommend that if you have one at home, use that. I do not have one in the sewing area or was that the one I poked? Yeah, that was the one I poked. All right. So I'm going to use this. I have these little tweezer plier things. So this one's open. I'm just going to pull that. And then let me make sure this hole is good enough as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. Paper punch hole, anything, anything sharp that you can get through. I had my seam ripper near me and you know, we're always using those, so. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just take this and we're gonna poke it on through. Just get it in there course it's gonna give me trouble all right it's gotta go through one more time this one also has a smaller side on it maybe i should be using that instead all right i'm just gonna go through perfect all right okay kind of looks like a watermelon a little bit huh with the green <laughs> So here's that, and then we're gonna pull it. I th it might they might have put it on? Yes. Okay, that's good. I just wanted to make sure I had it on the right way. So now we're gonna take this. We're gonna tie it. So see, there you go. You got the little fold, and then we're gonna fold this up and finish that on the rest of the sides. We'll be good to go. Got a little tie. I definitely need to get some thicker ribbon. <laughs> this is very thin, very thin. I would say get thicker ribbon. <laughs> or I'm using yarn today just for the sake of what I have, but I also just kind of want to use up what I don't really use that often. So we're going with that. But Yes. All right. So let's keep going. You know what? I'm going to try the ribbon on this side and see if that makes a difference. Cause this just is not very strong and it won't hold the shapes. You can't really see the shape it's going to have when it's done. Let's go through and just poke these really quickly. All right. I'm just going to go in. Oh, that's true too. I don't want to mess this one up. I'm going to just quickly go in and make some holes really quickly. All right. But I will be picking up. Yeah, I got to use, sometimes I just have to use what I got because when I go live, especially with my microphone, if I leave, like if I left and went to go grab something that I have, you wouldn't be able to hear me. So yeah, I don't want you to not be able to hear what's going on. So I'm just going to pop them open. All right. I'm going to untie this too, because we're just going to try the ribbon. I do. I wish I picked up some fray check because that would have totally, that would have totally fixed this fray problem with this ribbon here. Um, oh, this one's better. Okay. Let's try it with this ribbon here. Where's the ones that I just pulled out? Okay. So. I think it's going to have to be with something thicker. It does say use some ribbon. 
Um, so if you have, um, yeah, see that's fraying up a little bit. Well, I'll trim this off once I get it on the other side. Um, let's poke it through this hole. Okay. No. It's okay with it. Okay. Perfect. Much better. Much better. Let me trim these little fray pieces off. Um, I'm going to send, I will, in the Facebook group, I'm going to send out an updated picture once I find some better ribbon that looks a little bit better. I hate that when that happens. Let's trim this off. Okay. There we go. Looking better. You can see the vision now. It looks better. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. We got that one. Let's tie her off. Oops. Little piece of short. Okay. All right. And we're just going to do this all the way around. Of course, this ribbon is so like slick. It's slipping off my hands. There we go. Trim all this fray off. And then we should have. We get trim too. Oops. All right. And there's one. There's a side. Ignore the frayed ribbon. That is not a part of the, <laughs> part of the project. Um, I just got to keep it real with you. So I'm going to trim that off. And now let's quickly go get onto our other ones. I will be investing in the tools you all are recommending. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just going to make little openings. I'm going to kind of hit it at an angle. Just make little slices in there. If I can even like go in and out, that's even better. All right. But take your time with this. Proceed with caution. We are working with sharp items so be careful okay almost done okay Alrighty. and i'm doing my best not to get that sat those eyelets that we stitched so oh good yeah the the red ribbon, I think, looks a lot better. I could have probably used both, like done a little like ribbon with the little um, yarn that I've got in there. Okay, where did I leave off? We've got that one, we've got this one. Okay. <laughs> Just gotta open them up. Okay. I think, oh, these ones aren't done. The hardest part about this whole thing will probably be the bow tying. <laughs> if you're not, if you don't, if you haven't done a bow tie or a little tie in a long time, it might take you a second because that was me in this case. Okay. And I just want to get that open. So I just want to make sure I'm slicing it just enough. All right. <clears throat> Let me get our other pieces of yarn really quickly, just so I can show you guys what it will look like. Okay. Now we're going to poke this one through. I love these little pliers. Um, they're, they're so helpful, especially with things like this. I also use this when I'm like turning things inside out. Um, anything like that can just make a big difference. And of course, that's 
kind of making the fray worse, but you know, we're going to get different ribbon. No worries. I almost wanted to like, I wanted to do like a more, uh, when I'd first seen this pattern, I was like, Ooh, what if there was like a more beachy toned one? And then we did like some, um, like twine or something like that, where it was more like ropey. You could tie it and make a little rope, not actual rope bowls, but you know, use the rope to tie off the baskets. And that would be really cute as well. Okay. So now we're going to tie this. And maybe the, maybe the fraying of the, of the ribbon adds a little texture, you know, it adds like a little, makes it a little bit more abstract. All right. So let's tie this off. Okay. Oops. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> Okay. Oops, kicking the camera. Okay. I'm also doing this at an awkward angle because I have the camera right in front of me. So, okay, perfect. Ah, and I just pulled it. No, we can recover. There we go. Okay. I'm not messing with it anymore. <laughs> We're going to finish these last two pieces and we will be good to go. I poke holes in here. Did I miss these ones? All righty. Perfect. All right, let's get this side in. I might have to cut one more little piece of ribbon. All righty, slide that in. And I'd love to see all of your amazing creations. I want to see how everybody makes these baskets their own. All right. So I just want to tie it tight. You want to make sure that it gets that fold. All right. I'm going to turn this over. Okay, we got to untie and retie. It's not as tight as we need it to be. All righty. All right, we're just going to leave it like that. We'll just do a little bow. No biggie. It would be a shame if you spent all this time like me <laughs> putting this, putting these bows on your basket and then something you set it out on display and it goes undone. Let's just pray that doesn't happen to anybody that is making these baskets. <laughs> okay. Let me poke this hole through. I'm covered in red fuzz. All right, these are open as well. Okay, not open all the way. All right. Yes, I will definitely, before I do any more basket projects, I will definitely be investing in the eyelet tool for sure, or at least getting it out of my Altair box. Okay. We're on our last two. Last two. All right. Fold, and then we're going to tie, tie it up. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying this. Oh gosh, who commented that? Um, yes. Well, this is real. This is real life, especially with ribbon. I did not realize that it frays this much <laughs> when you cut it. I cut it this morning and like a few minutes before I went live, I was like, what is happening to this ribbon? It like is falling apart. Um, I thought it was a little bit more stable than that. Okay. I've got a couple more pieces left. And we will be almost, almost out of here. Please, please do better bow tying than me. <laughs> okay. Oh, did I do this inside out? Well, I guess I totally did. I just saw a comment. Shouldn't the berries be on the inside? <laughs> yes. Well, I will fix this and adjust this later. But I want to be able to just show you the finished project, at least. So let me... Finish this real quick, and then we'll be out of here. All right. It totally can be reversible. It doesn't matter what side you do it on, honestly. It's just the way you tie the ribbons. So you just have to untie. You just have to untie the ribbons and then re reattach them to the other side. So that's the only thing. And if you have way better ribbon than I do, this, I don't even think this is, this isn't even on our website. It was kind of from a little package. It was a roll of ribbon. Um, but I just don't think I'm a fan. Okay. <laughs> Let's stick this through. Let's get this tied. Well, I must say it does look cute with the berries on the outside. <laughs> oh, you're so right, Verita. I could do that. I don't have a lighter near me, but I will do that once I get out of here. Um, I'm going to redeem myself. I will show you what it looks like with better <laughs> ribbon for sure. Hey, at least this is like using our scraps. We're going to use it all regardless of whether it looks... Um, whether it looks good, not so good, whatever the case may be. Um, one more, one more, and then we are done with this project. Um, I am super excited. Obviously, this last little example with these ribbon is not the best example because it's not the best ribbon, but you can do it with anything. I mean, I love, there's a piece of, um, Oh gosh, what is it? I think there's a piece of ribbon mm -hmm. that we have at our mm -hmm. retail store that has like, it looks like rulers. So it looks like a, you know, you're measuring and it's super cute. And so I thought about doing that with, um, with that for a basket, maybe like for a teacher or a quilter or whatever. Um, it would turn out really, really cute. So yes. And I just want to say, let me show you one more time for the project. I'm going to set it right here so you guys can see. Um, that is the pattern right here. So you guys can go shop at smplive.tv if you want to check out that pattern. Those are beautiful ribbons. That's, that's, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal here. Um, but you guys can go shop. It's up on the website. It does come in different sizes and this works for anybody with an embroidery machine, even if you have a four by four. So that's really nice to know. That's why I picked that this project originally. So that way everyone can do this project with an embroidery machine because sometimes you miss out on doing things because a lot of the designs are for bigger hoops or they're just bigger designs in general. So this is a perfect way for you to actually make like a completed start to finish project in your four by four rather than just doing like a design by itself, you know. It will be smaller though. So just an FYI, it won't be as big as the one that I've got here, but it'll still be super cute and I'll still be so proud. So you'll be so proud of yourself too for completing it. So just good, good practice as well. Especially if you've never done an in the hoop project before. Um, this is super easy. I think it was less than, oh gosh, I'd have to go back and, oh, here it is. Um, 
I believe it is one, two, three, four, five, like six steps, six or seven steps in your machine. So very, very easy and user, you know, user friendly and for beginners for sure. A lot of Kimberbell's projects are honestly pretty simple, but they just like the quilted, I would say the quilted bench um, pillows, those are just going to take a long time. And it's just a lot of, you know, um, just kind of repeating the same steps as well. And you're doing a lot of different designs in one, one project. I think I've never done a bench pillow before, but I want to say that you'll do it like kind of block by block. You'll stitch on a block and then you will, um, all right, we're going to leave that bow just like that. <laughs> okay. Let me come back and just say, I am going to redeem myself with these ribbon. I'm just letting you know it's going to happen. And I'm also going to turn this inside out and make sure it's back, <laughs> back where it needs to go and on the opposite side. But here it is. I want to show you a close up really quickly woo, of the quilting so you can see up close because I know I was able to show you in the machine, but you can see up close. Look at all that. Ooh, la la. <laughs> It turned out really well. I got to peel off some of this ribbon fuzz that's left over. You can see all that fraying. I don't know if you could see it so up close. It was, it's fraying like crazy. So I got to switch that out, but you can see the quilting up close. It looks way better and more noticeable on that um, lighter fabric, but so cute, so much fun. And I did make this a two hour show. I'm aware of that. I'm very almost a three hour show. I'm aware of that, but this is a 35 minute stitch out. So we were, I was telling you about it. I was showing you instruction, blah, 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 blah. So it will take less time than that. So don't be scared if that's the thing that you're like, whoa, no, I promise it's not. But with all that being said, I hope you guys go and check out all the stuff that we talked about today. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go get like a lighter or something and burn the edges of that ribbon or something. Um, but I will update you of the final, final project. So join our Facebook group on Facebook, our private Facebook group for SP Nation, um, to see the final one and share yours uh, because I want to see yours. Okay. So, again, just one more time, if you guys want to pick up this pattern, it's the quilted baskets pattern from Kimberbell. Super fun. It comes with a bunch of different sizes, a bunch of different designs. I think there's, I want to say, so there's 25 total. You're getting 25 total designs in here. Okay. So you get a lot. You are able to customize each of them. They've got different shapes and different um, quilting for each, each basket. So highly, highly recommend you check those out. But I think it's time for some giveaways. I mean, uh, do you want some giveaways? I can do giveaways if you want. It's been a long time. So I'm going to call Kyle. Oh, he's got it. He's running. He's running to go do the spin. Okay. So let's do some giveaways. Let me get some music going. Let's do this. <laughs> he's, he, now he's in control now. So let's, I don't know what you're going to do. Whoa. Okay. So first up, we're going to do a $100 gift card because SMP Nation, you are the best. And you went and sat and listened to blab and blab on and on for the past two and a half hours. So you are getting a gift card. So let's spin and see who's going to win. Kyle, see that wheel. Oh, oh, no, you're fine. Gayla, congratulations. You, Kyle's clapping for you. I don't know if you can hear. Um, congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card. So if you'd like to claim that prize, head to smplive.tv, fill out that form, and we will get that to you via email. So make sure your email is in that um, code or in that form. Make sure you have the email in there so we can send it to you. And also check your spam and your junk folder if we do send you emails or if you did want to give away because apparently with Google and, and certain email platforms, they're sending us to spam. So just check your spam and your junk. Um, I've been getting some questions that they're not getting our emails. So that's, I would just check that. Um, all right. Now I'm going to spin for a, let's just do another hundred dollar. Go spin. Spin it up.
Dennis Lohr, congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card to Sewing Machines Plus. So if you'd like to claim that, head to smplive.tv, fill out the information. Again, most important thing we need is your email so we can send you that code via email. So congrats, Dennis. All right, and I think next up, we're gonna do a sew mat. I love to give a sew mat away. All right, we've got all the different colors. You can go pick what size and what color you'd like. Just head to our website and search sew mat and then you'll be able to find all the colors that we have available. You can kind of see them here, but if you wanna see the full picture, you can go see the product page for all the colors. But let's see who's gonna win. Kyle, spin it up. Spin and spin. We need to make like a spinning song. No, that's no. That's too aggressive. <laughs> Noreen, congratulations. You have just won a sew mat of your very own. So if you'd like to claim that, go ahead and head to smplive.tv, fill out the information, let us know who and where to send it to and what color and what size you'd like because we want to know. You get it, you get to pick. All right. Well, that is going to finish it up for the giveaways today. And that is also just going to finish it up for the show today. Oh my goodness. I have missed you guys so much. And I had so much fun today just sitting and chatting and just talking about just everything. It's been so much fun. And who knows? Maybe we'll maybe we'll get back into, into it soon. Well, you'll just have to tune in and find out. But you guys are the absolute best SMP Nation just you're the best. I love you all. And I hope to see you very soon. I will be doing the show tomorrow with Blaine. You'll see me on there. So join in. And if this was your first time watching me today, first off, thank you so much because this was a long one. So if you're still here, kudos to you. I am so grateful and thankful that you guys came and joined today. And again, if you want to shop any of the products, the description box is full with links to all the products that I used, as well as the quilted basket design is down in the description box. But if you want to look, see the words scrolling down right here, smplive.tv, type that in your search bar to get this. That'll show up for you. So you can go find that for you. Um, but yeah, Thank you guys so much for watching. I had an absolute blast. And, you know, something I've learned today is that um, me and ribbon don't mix. So, and that was my first time using ribbon on the show. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just not, not it, not it for the shows. <laughs> but I am going to go ahead and get out of here. But I hope you have an amazing, amazing rest of your Valentine's Day. Go eat some chocolate for me. I know it's bad, but just go treat yourself. Go have a bite. Go have a bite. Okay, just, just a bite. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Valentine's Day. Go make something fun. Go stitch something out. Um, just get your get your brain going and creative. So um, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'm investing in better ribbon. Just saying. Diane, I will hug my mom for you. <laughs> and I will see you guys so soon. All right. See you tomorrow, actually, for SMP Live. Bye, guys.